It was an unfamiliar end for the Saskatchewan Rush last season as they fell short of the NLL final for the first time in five years. But a new season brings new opportunity, and after avenging their early playoff exit with a win in Colorado, the Rush are ready to hit the floor for their home opener. The New England Black Wolves come to town after dispatching the Toronto Rock with a strong effort on the road, and another solid showing in Saskatoon would send a loud message to the rest of the league that the Wolves are in the championship hunt. The Rush battle the Black Wolves next on BR Live. The following is a special presentation of the National Lacrosse League. Welcome inside SaskTel Center as we are set for another high-flying season of lacrosse action here in Saskatoon. The Saskatchewan Rush set to host the New England Black Wolves in their home opener tonight. I'm Ryan Flaherty and alongside me again this season, Jake Elliott. Jake, we're fired up for another season here in Saskatoon. Oh, I'm so happy to be back in Saskatoon and back with Rush Nation and back inside the SaskTel Center. Of course, the Rush won the attendance derby a year ago, and they'll look to do that here again. They're going to be going nuts. It's the game of the week, and it's the home opener, and you know Sask is going to come with it here tonight. And we have got a good one for you on the very first National Lacrosse League game of the week this season because these two teams have played each other tight for the most part over the last few years, and they both won their first game of the season on the road and each looking for a 2-0 start. Yeah, it's interesting. New England's really kind of had Saskatchewan's number over the last couple of contests. We had that big one where Saskatchewan put up 24 goals against the Black Wolves, but then New England's been able to win by a goal in each of their last outings here, including the home opener for them a year ago back at the Mohegan Sun Casino. Some great players to watch on both sides this evening, and it starts with a guy for the rush who's looking to have a bounce back season. He looked great in week one, Robert Church. He sure did. He was in on eight of the nine goals that Saskatchewan scored a week ago down in Denver, excuse me, two weeks ago. And we know that he was starting that season last year with a bit of an upper body injury that really hampered him all season long. This year, Robert Church has come in completely healthy. He's off to a great start, and he wants to continue that here tonight. Defensively for the Rush, they got some reinforcements this year. Ryan Dilks is back, and so is Jeff Cornwall, who makes his season debut tonight. Yeah, watching Jeff Cornwall in the morning shoot around here this morning. He is eager to go, and he was running all over the place. There was all sorts of energy coming out of Jeff Cornwall, and that's really infectious. The guys will feed off of that, and I'm so excited to watch 13 get back in green and black. And he will face a big test in his very first game back because New England is led offensively by a guy who put up 109 points last season, a career-high 48 goals in Callum Crawford. Yeah, showtime, they call Callum Crawford, and he always produces, and he'll really be a marked man here for Saskatchewan tonight. If they can slow 98 down, down, good chance Saskatchewan will come out on top but it's no easy task it all funnels through him and he's really the key to their offense one of the big question marks for New England coming into the season was goaltending Doug Jamison the undisputed number one for the first time in his career and he passed the test in his first game he really did and a lot of people asking questions about Dougie Jamison can he be a true number one in the National Lacrosse League this is a guy that's had success at the lower levels he's won Minto Cups as a goaltender now I think they put the confidence in Doug Jamison you're our guy and that goes a long way with a goaltender knowing that he is the man and he showed up in game one against the Toronto Rock we'll see how he does here against this high powered offense for Saskatchewan two high powered offenses going head to head so the key could very well be defense and goaltending here tonight it's going to be a lot of fun we are just a few minutes away from the opening faceoff as the Saskatchewan Rush take on the New England Black Wolves it's the game of the week here on the National Cross League on BR Live The NLL on BR Live is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com to see how much you could save. And by Alterna Bank, Canada's end-to-end -end digital bank. Alterna puts the good in banking. Visit AlternaBank.ca to learn more.
Car ton bras s'est porté le peigne, il s'est porté la croix. Ton histoire est une épopée des plus brillants espoirs. God keep on the land. just moments away from week three action here in Saskatoon. The Saskatchewan Rush taking on the New England Black Wolves. Glad you could join us tonight for the NLL Game of the Week on BR Live. My name is Ryan Flaherty alongside Jake Elliott. Great to be back with you for another season here from Saskatoon. Great to be back with you as well, Flats. Never get tired of my all-time favorite song, O Canada, and you know that means it's time to play some lacrosse here from the Sastel Center, the home opener for the Saskatchewan Rush as the New England Black Wolves come to town. We touched on it off the open. Both of these teams won their opening game on the road, so both looking to keep it humming here in week three. Yeah, an impressive road victory for the Wolves uh, in Toronto, 12-8 in the final in that one, and just as impressive, I would say, for Saskatchewan. Never an easy place to play down in Denver, Colorado, and they squeak out a one-goal victory against the Mammoth, 9-8 there, but really it was Robert Church's uh, my old friends here, Flats, the Saskatoon Hilltops uh, in the building sporting their Canadian Bowl trophy here before we get started. And before we get to the opening face-off, let us send it down to the floor level and join our third member of our broadcast crew, Daniela Ponticelli, who's standing by with a man who has been waiting a while to get back oh, in the yes. rush lineup. That's right, Ryan. I'm here with Jeff Cornwall. Jeff, the last time you were here celebrating a championship win, now finally back after your oh, firefighter oh, training. What does it mean to be back here with these guys? Uh, you know, it's a, it's a feeling that's indescribable. Uh, you know, waiting that whole year off, watching the boys play, uh, felt like I was missing out a little bit, and they welcomed me back with open arms, so I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, quick words of advice for your brother you're playing with? Uh, just, you know, play hard and uh, enjoy it, because you only get a couple chances. Same to you. Thanks, Jeff. Back to you guys. Thanks so much, Daniela. And yes, the Cornwall brothers united this season. Travis Cornwall, of course, joined the rush last year. Jeff now joining his brother, so that's going to be fun to watch. The officials tonight, our crew chief is Chris Williams, the assistant referees, John Schiltz and Brent Colomb, and the shot clock operator is Calvin Roseberry Jake. Teams are at center and set to go. It's Thompson and Nardella. Blow the whistle. Let's play some across and underway from Sastel. You heard the man. We are underway as the Saskatchewan rush take lose the opening draw and it's Jordan Durson who will take possession for New England as the Black Wolves try to get their offense on but a wild pass from Durston is swallowed up by the rush one and thing, they will get going offensively. Sorry Ryan, one thing I'm confident about here tonight is we're not going to get these two teams confused uh, uniform wise here this evening. Yeah, very, very distinct difference in look. Looks sharp. Hope you're enjoying it from wherever you may be watching tonight as Dinsdale Sends it down to McIntosh. Out front, Shatler shot right on, and Doug Jamison with his first stop of the game. Oh, my goodness. That was a real good look there for Shatler on the opening possession for the rush. That might have caught some pipe as well. Black Wolves now with their first real offensive possession is Reza Terrence looking for Crawford, but another errant pass, and the rush will happily take advantage of that. Yeah, that's something I want you to watch here tonight, Flats, is watch how far out the rush defense will extend the center as the New England Black Wolves are bringing the ball across. And two times they've done it, two turnovers here for Saskatchewan. Here's Connor Robinson for Robert Church. Eight points in the season opener. Robinson fires and Jamison steps out and makes the stop. Now Connor Robinson will get a regular rotation here for Saskatchewan now and I think has the confidence in Stilton. I didn't see that last year from C-Rob. I see it this year now, playing with much more confidence than he did a year ago. Two goals in the season opener as the Black Wolves trying to put something together offensively. Still a bit of a disjointed start here in the early going as Chris Corbeil settles things down for the rush, who will get their offense back quickly on the floor. Shatler down to Ryan Keenan. A number change for Ryan Keenan this season, wearing 15 instead of 25. Now Robert Church with it. And Mark Matthews. 
Five points for Matthews in the opener. His shot is stopped by Jamison, who's been the busier tender in the first couple minutes. Yeah, I like to see the aggressive take there for Matthews early, try and get his shot going. And not a great angle there, but still a good shot on goal and tested the goaltender in Jamison. Here is Callum Crawford. He will be the key to focus on for the rush. Defense is, he's coming off a 109 point campaign and he looked very dangerous last week with seven points. His pass though, over the head of his teammate and quickly comes Mike Messenger up the floor of the rush trying to get something going in transition. But Travis Cornwall will think better of that and leave it for Robinson who go. takes a hard check, knocked down to the floor by Ty Logan. Good job defensively there by the Black Wolves rookie. Yeah, and I think Robinson might have stepped his toe a little bit on the turf and that helped him to the ground. But it's just marveling at the speed up the floor there from the Cornwall brothers as they tried to create transition. Wolves now setting it up as Reseteritz. Dave Emil out there as well. Now LeBlanc takes the pass. Now trying to cut inside, can't back to Q, has room. And there's the first save for Evan Kirk for the rush. And again, I think that caught outside of the post too, but Kirk did get a piece as the number three overall pick tested their rush goaltender. As the Black Wolves offense starts to settle in here, O'Connor over the top, doesn't have a lane. There's a dunk attempt, and no, they're going to call that a goal. Ness after a late signal, I thought it was a goal, didn't have the official signal right away, but it is the Black Wolves who take the one nothing lead. Yeah, beautiful extra pass here. Watch O'Connor sells the shot. That makes Kirk come out to challenge. And here's the dunk attempt from behind. Kirk almost gets a stick on that one to recover in time. But let's watch the ball. Let's watch the man in the crease here. And I think we might get a challenge here from Derek Keene. I know it's early in the game. Red flag still laying there. And maybe not here, but I think that was very close. And I might throw the flag there if I'm the head coach of the rush. But it looks like not too concerned about it early in the game here. Play on, and we'll go back to center for a faceoff. one nothing. Black Wolves on the dunk. So a good start for the road team. That's what you want to do when you're in a hostile barn like this one. One thing we should mention here, Flats, I don't think we got the scratches in here for either team here tonight. Joel Tinney and Derek Downs, a defender and an offensive player, a scratch here tonight for head coach Glenn Clark. And out here for the rush tonight, forward Austin Murphy and defenseman Jordy Jones-Smith. As the rush take over on offense, trailing by a goal. That goal scored by Dave Amala, his first of the season as the shot is turned aside by Jamison, a reset for Saskatchewan. Shatler to Matthews, Robinson with the pick, Matthews nowhere to shoot. Church takes it, looking far side, just missed, but it stays with the rush as Robinson goes high to pull that ball down. No time on the shot clock here, 15 to work with. Church now playing the two-man game with McIntosh, now skips it across for Shatler. Shatler being watched there by Tchaikovsky, tries to find McIntosh, but it's taken away by the Black Wolves. The former rush member, John LaFontaine. Yeah, he's really settled in nicely to this Black Wolves lineup, has taken on a leadership role as well here for Glenn Clark and the Wolves. Now in his third season with New England after seven with the rush as Reza Terrence has a look, almost looked to dunk it again, but didn't have the space, so. Priest violation. And we have the rush taking over now. Ryan Keenan off the bench and the ball in his stick. Now Keenan, one, with now a six thing, point effort last, or two weeks ago, Ryan. And one thing I'll say here, Ryan, is that, you know, no goals for the rush yet, but I think they're getting quality looks, and that's a good sign. Keenan fires right on, and Jamison so far has been equal to the task. He stopped all four rush shots. Rush defense getting out the back door quickly here. So as Black Wolves offense will get set up once they get all their personnel on the floor. Reza Terrence completing the change, takes the pass. Working on Messenger who has the angle, backs it up. Now here's O'Connor and he scores. Riley O'Connor beats Kirk from distance. It's two nothing New England. Uh, Kirk uh, clearly not happy with himself on that one. It's a long outside shot, a pretty accurate one as well though as it goes low to the short side and skips into the back of the goal. And you can't ask for a better start here from the Black Wolves as they get the 2-0 lead here on the goal from O'Connor, who, again, I think is one of these players on the National Lacrosse League that's really ready to take the next step and become a premier player in this league. Got off to a bit of a slow start early in his career, but has really found his groove, and now a big part of this Black Wolves offense. And already two points tonight after being held off the score sheet in the season opener a week ago. So. A good start to this one for number nine, who had a career year last year. Five minutes gone in the opening quarter. New England has 
quieted this crowd just a little bit here with the first two goals of the game. An early move there from Thompson on the faceoff, moving the stick, trying to clamp before the whistle from the official. Reza Teretz with Holden Garland watching him. Now Durston inside for O'Connor, dives the Kirk with the stop. There's a rebound. And a crease violation will give the ball to the rush as we hit our first time out here. A quick first five and a half minutes and the Black Wolves get a couple of goals to take the 2-0 lead and they are enjoying that as we head to break. You're watching the NLL Game of the Week. Welcome back inside Sastel Center. The Saskatchewan Rush have the early advantage on the shot clock, but it's the New England Black Wolves with the 2-0 lead. Yeah, a little surprising start here, and then a couple of nice goals, I would have to say. A dunk from behind the goal, and then a pretty accurate shot from Riley at corner. I don't think there's going to be any panic here for Saskatchewan, but obviously getting down to nothing on their home floor here is not something they want, and they want to start to get the offense going here. And I, I mentioned, I think they've had some real good looks to start this game, but Got to give Dougie Jamison some credit here. He's made some excellent stops here for the Black Wolves. And a flipping of the script by the Black Wolves who fell behind 2-0 early last week against Toronto. In fact, just a minute and a half into that game. And then they were able to turn things around and end up winning that game. So perhaps the Rush hoping for some, maybe use that as a little inspiration. Absolutely. And we are back underway as the action resumes. Rush with the ball. Shatler bringing it up and he leaves it for Keenan. He'll take the return feed and the Rush Trying to cut into this early two goal deficit. Matthews, skip across for Church, now takes it back. Robert Church looking for an opening, now down for Dinsdale. Takes that shot, did get a piece of it, was Doug Jamison and Mark Matthews quick to get that reset. Yeah, Rush liked to run plays out of TV timeouts and they ran a good one there, got a real good look for Dinsdale, but look out, transition here for New England. It's a breakaway opportunity, Tchaikovsky coming in on goal, fires and Kirk makes a big stop there. And that's a real important, timely stop for Evan Kirk. It wasn't a difficult one. I know it was a breakaway, but it's an important one for Evan Kirk to make that save, keep that a 2 nothing lead, and try and get the momentum back on the side of here of the rush. Church with it. Pick from Dinsdale. Now over to Keenan. Back for Robert Church. Ben McIntosh now. He had five goals in the season opener last year. Church fires that one is wide, and shot clock running down, and... Keenan will just dump it into the corner. Good job defensively by the Black Wolves on that sequence. Yeah, we mentioned in the opening flats that uh, this is a lot of turnover on the back end here for New England, but they've become much younger, much faster, much more athletic, and they want to produce offense from their back end. It is the offense for the Black Wolves now with possession. LeBlanc, good job knocking that ball away was Hossack. Now he takes the feed, chance for Matt Hossack in transition. Good stick check from behind by LaFontaine, but looks like we're gonna have a penalty because of a Unless substitution, illegal substitution, yeah, I believe. Hang on here, Ryan. We might get a penalty shot here because I think that was too many men, and I think Hossick might have been on a clear-cut breakaway here. And that so is, the officials talking this over. I think we're gonna get a penalty shot. That is the discussion, I believe, right now with the men in it stripes. Is. And you are right, Jake. It was a breakaway for Hossick, so a penalty shot coming up here. Now watch it again. This is a clear path to the goal from a trail position and the man that came off the bench there yep. in LaFontaine, that was the too many men call. So now Saskatchewan able to pick any player that they want so to take the penalty side. shot and no surprise here, Platts. They go with the mailman, Mark Matthews. A uh, shocking turn of events. Uh, the yeah, Captain Obvious yeah. is in the building. <laughs> Absolutely. So Mark Matthews with a prime opportunity now to have the Black Wolves lead and he will have no defensive players to worry about on this one. Just him and Doug Jamison going mano and mano. Uh, of course, our officials mic'd up here tonight as well, Flats, and we'll try and get you some of that audio here. Is always one of my favorite things. Here we go. Matthews swinging a little bit to his right, coming in on Jamison, picks the spot and scores. Mark Matthews with the penalty shot goal. He's done that a few times before. It's 2-1. Yes, Mark Matthews uh, coming off another 100-plus point season. Finished 10 back of the eventual leading scorer in Dane Toby. But Matthews, the perennial 100-point man, and he gets off 
to a good start here for the rush as he buries on the penalty shot as he goes stick side hip high on Dougie Jamison. Nothing fancy there. Just walk in, give yourself a good angle. Stick sees more than what the eyes do. And he's able to pot that one home to get the rush on the board. And he won't get an assist on the play, but Matt Hosek made that happen with forcing the turnover and then getting the breakaway chance that led to the too many men call and the penalty shot. So it's 2-1 now with seven minutes gone here in the first quarter. Good battle on the draw between Thompson and Joe Nardella. Loose ball scooped up by Tony Malcolm, another newcomer to this Black Wolves lineup this year. Malcolm comes right in on goal and Kirk makes the save. That was a real good stop there for Kirk as that thing had eyes for the far pipe just inside it. Kirk had to make a real good save to keep that one out. Shatler now. But I'm really interested Corbeil. to watch this battle between Jeremy Thompson and Nardella tonight. I think it's gonna be a good one. McIntosh, no lane, drops it back for Dinsdale now, back to McIntosh. Shatler in the middle fires, and Jamison looking sharp here early, makes another good stop. Back comes the Black Wolves captain, Brett Manny. He'll dish it off to Watkinson and head off. The rest of the offense now jumping on for New England. Callum Crawford, the Reza Terrets, those two, both with 100 point seasons on their resume. Here comes Crawford facing a double team though. Physical defense and the shot comes from Andrew Q. It trickles past Evan Kirk and the rookie has his second of the season. It's 3-1 Blackwell. Third overall pick, Q ball he likes to go by. And that was another shot, almost a picture shot of what Riley O'Connor did going low to the glove. Kirk got a big chunk of that one, but I think Andrew Q and, and what his biggest asset is, is his outside shot, and was able to just kind of overpower Evan Kirk with that one as the Black Wolves go back up by two here, three to one, 6.54 to go, quarter number one. Third overall pick in this year's draft, Andrew Q. Yeah, a lot of people expecting Q was gonna go number one, and it kind of threw the draft board for a bit of a loop when Tyson Gibson was selected by the Riptide number one, and I think the Black Wolves were very excited and very happy to find 42 land at them at the number three hole. And New England is right back with the ball here off the faceoff. Nardella, Corbeil just a, chasing him yeah, doggedly right look there. Look at where the pressure is here, Flats. They are out near center right now, double teaming the ball carry. And the shot clock down to five as Crawford knocked to the turf. He's running out of time, won't have a shot. Takes one wildly, but it misses the net. And, the possession will go to Saskatchewan. Saw Callum Crawford on the way to morning shoot around this morning in the lobby of the hotel. I said, how you doing? He goes, huh, to be honest, I'm a little tired. Callum resides in Tulsa, Tulsa, to Atlanta, to Toronto, to Saskatoon. That was Callum Crawford's route. That's really direct. As here's Robinson takes a check as he was trying to release the shot, which caused it to go way over top of the net. And now quickly in transition, here's LaFontaine Cornwall, that is Travis Cornwall on him, but a man in front is Q. Stepped on the crease line though, so Kirk did make a save regardless, but it wouldn't have counted even if it beat him. And there's that transition I'm talking about from Black Wolves back in. It started with LaFontaine, and I know the chance ends up with an offensive player after that, but that's running hard up the floor, creating that opportunity. Now a now sloppy Church turnover taking here. taking his eye off the ball on that pass, and that would be a back and over, so the rush aren't gonna bother touching up. It'll be New England ball now. Steph LeBlanc. We'll start it off for the Black Wolves. LeBlanc skipping it across for Crawford. The lanky frame of Callum Crawford. Now Riley O'Connor trying to get around McLean. Gets the shot away, kicked out by Evan Kirk. Chris Corbeil will settle it down for the rush. Still sporting that gold shaft and red head that he was donning for Team Canada just a couple of months ago at the World Championships. Five members of this Rush team were part of that crew that was coached by New England head coach Glenn Clark. As Mike Burns, making his season debut, scoops it up and will head back up the floor for New England. And Crawford once again on the floor to lead the, the attack. Jeff Cornwall, that's gonna be a matchup to watch all night long. Q into the middle for O'Connor, physical play on the part of the rush defense that time and it forces an easy stop for Kirk. Travis Cornwall to his brother Jeff takes the shot and a good stop by Doug Jamison on that hot shot from Jeff Cornwall. Uh, I'm telling you what, Flats, if we get to watch 20 and 13 go up that far side, 
like they have a couple of times here all season long. We're in for a treat. We're going to break right now, though. Absolutely, as we have played just over 10 and a half minutes of this opening quarter, you're watching the Rush, the Black Wolves on the... Back inside Sastel Center, and we will send it right down to the floor where we rejoin Daniela Ponticelli. Ryan, talk about a moment with all eyes watching Mark Matthews' penalty shot just making this place pop. But one thing as well to remember, Jeff Cornwall's back in the D, but also Ryan Dilks. He's back first time in a year. He's happy to be back last season, watching all the action from home, sometimes having some support from former Rush coach Jimmy Quinlan as well. He told me last year it was very hard to watch, so I know he's excited to be back as well. Guys? Play here in the first quarter, the New England Black Wolves leading the Saskatchewan Rush by a score of three to one. And Cameron Hughes is in the building and was, he is getting the crowd fired up. I was wondering who that was. He is going berserk here inside the Sastel Center, trying to get these fans going. They don't need a lot of help, but great to have Cameron on hand here tonight, the professional fan. He makes his way around the continent, firing crowds up left, right, and center. That's not a bad gig. Callum Crawford looking for the pass behind the net. Doesn't make contact though, but sloppy play defensively and the Wolves retain possession, but only five left on the shot clock. LeBlanc checked hard there and has the ball knocked out of his stick. Ryan Dilks helping to knock that ball free. Yeah, it's clearly the MO here of the rush defense to be ultra aggressive on the ball carrier. They're sending two, three guys sometimes as soon as he turns his back. So the rush still looking for their first goal during the run of play here this evening. McIntosh takes that shot but misses the net. Still 10 on the shot clock as Matthews tries to track down the loose ball along the far boards. Double teamed there as now just five to shoot. Shatler can't scoop it up and the Black Wolves will take that shot clock violation. I gotta give the Black Wolves defense some credit here too as well, Flat say They've come to play here tonight and I think 3.20 to go here in this opening quarter, make it 4-1 New England now. Excuse me, Ryan. A sneaky but, backhander there. But a great start here for New England. They couldn't ask for a better start here in Saskatchewan as Crawford buries here to make it a three goal spread. Well, you saw exactly why Callum Crawford is so dangerous there. A very sneaky little shot as he flips it past Evan Kirk and it's a 4-1 game here with 3.17 to go in the first. Shots on goal, 9-9, but four goals on nine shots here for New England. Has them in a three goal lead. Pence, I need to let you know that next Saturday, the NOL Game of the Week moves to Calgary as the defending champions raise their championship banner before taking on Kyle Killen and the Colorado Mammoth. Catch all the action on BR Live, Twitter, and Facebook. That's next Saturday, starting with NOL Game Day, live at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So Callum Crawford picks up his fourth goal of the season, his third point already here tonight. Give him 10 early in this campaign. Assists on that goal going to Tony Malcolm and Joe Nardella. And New England back with the ball once again. So after some good looks early for the rush, it's been pretty much all guys in orange in the last little bit. O'Connor, bodied by Hassan. Leaves it for Crawford, cutting inside. Kirk with a good save that time on a tough angle shot from Callum Crawford, who now finds that loose ball in behind the rush goal. He's triple teamed and escapes and manages to find the ball once again. He's still trying to track it down. Corbeil finally digs it free for the rush. That was quite the battle. 15 years in the league for Showtime Callum Crawford. He was dealing with three rush defenders there and almost won that battle. So the rush trying to stem the tide a little bit here late in this opening quarter, just two minutes remaining. In the first, Church to Matthews. Looking inside, can't connect with Keenan. Shot clock down to five. Church takes it. Jamison steps out and makes the stop, but good play by Ryan Keenan as he's first to the loose ball and gets a fresh 30. Yeah, and that's this is where Saskatchewan wants to make this New England defense work. They just played a full 30, now make them work for another 30. Dinsdale to McIntosh and a quick take, but an even better stop there by Doug Jamison. Yeah, and he stopped there. It wasn't going to count anyway as McIntosh put a foot in the crease and then was the first player to touch the ball, and he can't do that. Still Jamison, even though that one doesn't count, looking 
quite solid again after a strong performance to open the season. Reza Terrence for Andrew Q. Now Jordan Durston. Shot from the outside from Reza Terrence is stopped by Kirk, but Reza Terrence gets to the rebound and gets a new 30. New England now with 12 shots on the board here in this opening quarter. Durston down low for Q. Has Thompson on him. Q trying to make a fake and he's bitten by the turf monster, but O'Connor finds some room inside and Kirk with a very big stop. Let's see if they want to go quickly here for a two for one. Holden Garland for Thompson, back to Garland. He takes and Jamison with the save. 38 on the clock, Doug Jamison taking his time here, trying to hold off and try to get that time out in the last possession for New England. Yeah, and Church is, they, they gotta be aware there. That's a new ploy that you'll see teams try and take and they just killed off about nine seconds, and Church just has to reach into that crease and swat that ball loose, take the interference call, because they're gonna get possession anyways. And what Jamison was able to do there, Flats, was kill off nine seconds off the clock, so the clock goes under 30, so then now when they do get possession, the shot clock off, and they can play for final possession here. So getting back to that, when you see a goaltender just kind of protect the ball in his crease like that, you just have to either step into the crease or touch that ball, get the whistle immediately. And that's a heads up play there for the New England goaltender, Dougie Jamison. So the Black Wolves take the time out to set something yeah. up here and a very important possession defensively for the rush as well. Okay. Yeah, there it is that's again. Fine. So right there, Church just needs to smack that stick and touch that ball to get the whistle. Let's take it down and let's hear what the refs are saying. No, 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 no. Yeah, we, we talked about it okay. and Hubbard. That's what, that's what I was asking. Yeah. Before that started. Yeah. I thought we were all on the same page. No, absolutely not. It's in the memo. It's right in the memo he sent us. Right? So that's all right. Move on from it. Get the next one. No. He deemed no reset, and he scooped under the stick. So we're going. No, he was. He says he did not deem possession. So I think they were yeah. discussing the shot clock. We had a hard time up here in the booth hearing that discussion, but I think it was something concerning the shot clock because it's going to be at 25 okay, here. Okay, that's exactly what they were just talking about. I, I would have to assume here is they're talking about this play right here, how Jamison is protecting this ball. The game clock is not is still running, but the shot clock is not running. But I think they, dis they discussed it, and now they're going to say that the shot clock should have been running. So they're going to bring that shot clock down to 25. There's 28 on the game clock, so just three, four second differentials. Still, essentially, New England can hold for the final possession. And the Black Wolves will keep Jamison on the bench despite that roughly four second differential at 28.9 officially on the clock here at Saztel Center. Still pretty tough to find that, that open net with such a slim difference between the shot clock and game clock. And you know the, the Black Wolves, excuse me, are going to be holding it draining it right down to the last second before they take the shot. Yeah, and I think this is a smart coaching decision here from Glenn Clark and company. Keep Jamison in the goal. You got yourself a 4-1 lead on the road. He's going to cheat halfway, keep that rush offense, our defense honest here. 27 on the shot But we'll clock. see if he actually comes or not. I think they're going to put the shot clock to 27 now, it sounds like. So I would expect Jamison to come now. And if they go two seconds, big deal. It's a big difference in the sport of lacrosse. Yeah, two, two to four seconds is a, is a Wide, wide ocean. So Jamison now will or park a prairie, himself. If you will, <laughs> that's right. correct. Yeah, wide open wheat field. Yes. Between two and four seconds. So Jamison now takes a spot on the bench for the last few seconds as we're now down under 10 to go here in the quarter. Wolves looking for that last second goal. Into the middle for O'Connor. Good take. Kirk with the stop, and that'll do it for the opening frame. A good one for the visitors as they jump out to a 4-1 lead here on the Saskatchewan Rush. We'll take a break and be back with the second quarter. You're watching the National Lacrosse League Game of the Week. Back inside Sastel Center, 15 minutes are in the books and the New England Black Wolves building on the success of their road win last week. They're out to a 4-1 lead and Doug Jamison has been sharp early. Yeah, I think some real good opportunities here early for Saskatchewan and the thing with goaltenders are, right, when, when they feel the ball early, they make a number of stops early, their confidence level rises substantially and I think that's what's happened here with Doug Jamison. Great start for him.
and now he's feeling it. He's in the groove, and we're really going to have to, Saskatchewan's really going to have to try and work for goals here. They only got one, and let's remember, it came on a penalty shot for Mark Matthews. Absolutely. So still without a, a goal during the run of play here, something you don't often hear about the rush through an entire quarter uh, without a goal in the regular run of play, but still plenty of miles to go here in this one tonight. A three-goal deficit can be gone in the blink of an eye. The Black Wolves, meanwhile, they're, you have to think, pretty content with how this thing has played out so far. And more of the same here in the second quarter is probably the instruction from their bench. Yep, 60 minute game here, and I think both teams probably need to remember that. So we're almost set here for another big face off between Nardella and Thompson. A difference in experience, at least in the NLL, between these two guys. Uh, Jeremy Thompson been around. He's been one of the best at the faceoff dot. And Nardella, highly regarded faceoff man as well. And again, it's the game within the game here a little bit. And it seems it's going to be a fun battle to watch here between these two. So the rush, who only scored nine goals last week, still trying to get their offense clicking a little bit more, but of course it is very early in the season and still early in this game, and we're all set for the second quarter. Below the whistle, let's play some across. Here we go. Battle again as Thompson and Nardella both go to the turf, and it's Tony Malcolm who comes in and wins it for New England. Real speedster Tony Malcolm, Vancouver, giving up to Tony Malcolm to get a draft pick back the other way, which they went and spent for Nick Bielic here, Here's the former rush player. Excuse me. me. Jake is a rebound chance, and that one goes as Kirk made the initial save, but Joe Reseteritz flying in to pick up the rebound. It's 5-1 New England. Yeah, and I, I just, I want to credit this here, Flats, that I, I just think New England is just working harder than Saskatchewan right now. They're finding those loose balls. They're hungrier on them. They're looking for rebounds. They're going to the front of the goal. You see the opportunity there from O'Connor. Nobody boxes out Reseteritz. And Kirk doesn't have time to recover. He's only back to a knee here before this ball's coming right back at him from Joey Rez, who goes stick side once again. And look at this, 5-1 here, New England. Shots on goal, just 14-11. I would, I would think if we see one more here, we could see a goaltending change. We may indeed, although Kirk not getting a lot of help, it would seem, in front of him right now. On that goal especially. Rush needs something positive here as they're on the back foot right now. The, Wolves are taking it to them. So here's a 50-50 battle. There's nine guys involved for this loose ball, and it's New England that come up with it. They can go back a zone here, but the referee blowing that one down. Saskatchewan will get the ball. Possession awarded to the rush, so chance to get their offense back out on the floor. Trying to put one past Dougie Jamison here. Ryan Keenan, last one to join the party. Now in front, Matthews had his stick knocked out of his hands, though he was in position for yeah. the pass, but couldn't take it. And now here come the Wolves in transition. Running right down the floor is Watkinson. Double clutch, though, couldn't get the shot away as Rubish was all up in his grill. And now poor Beal off the bench with the steal and see if that can spark the rush. Well, you kind of feel like that, don't you? That it, the spark is going to come from the defense, making a defensive play there. And I thought there probably could have been a penalty there as Mark Matthews did have a stick ripped out of his hands. No call and we continue on. Matthews earning a fresh shot clock after the initial shot. Now here's Church as the rush, trying to find something offensively. Matthews right on. Jamison didn't see it initially. Robinson couldn't scoop up the rebound cleanly. As Jamison didn't know where the ball was for a moment there, but escapes unscathed. Want to get you a quick update from Duluth, Georgia, Ryan Flaherty, 11-4 Swarm leading the wings with about 7.45 to go in the fourth quarter. Of course, the Black Wolves in that division with the Georgia Swarm this year. There's a shot from LeBlanc stopped Here we by go. Evan Kirk to see if the rush can get out in transition. Messenger, though, has to wait for that ball. It's still loose just outside the New England crease, and it's the men in orange who get to it first. Byrne sprinting it up past center. And here come the pack. Callum Crawford as Emila Durston join him. Skips it across. Q with McLean on him. Dishes off. Here's Durston. Takes the shot and scores. That went right through Evan Kirk as Jordan Durston makes it 6-1. to one. Uh, We'll see what happens here. 12.32 to go, and uh, I think Adam Shute is donning the gear here. Not the 
six goals on Evan Kirk here on, on 17 shots and uh, maybe a couple that he wants back here, but I think this is more of a change of momentum, trying to stem the tide here a little bit more than anything as that one slips through the five hole from Jordan Durston and not a guy in Durston that likes to shoot to the five hole very often. And maybe that's why that one slipped through the wickets of 35. Here comes Adam Shute into the goal. So Adam Shute, who uh, saw plenty of action last season. Of course, Evan Kirk was down with an injury for a period of time last year. And Adam Shute looked quite solid in relief. Ended up with a winning record and uh, got some valuable experience. And now the rush will need him to be solid and try to stem the tide as they try to gain some offensive traction here against this Black Wolves defense that so far has shut them down. There's a Terrence for Crawford back to Reza Terrence and the first shot on is on shoot. It was behind him, but we got a crease violation as well. I'll see if Clark wants to take a look at that one on the replay as well, very close. But now the rush get going offensively. Doesn't look like the head coach of the Wolves is reaching into his pocket. Not yet anyway. McIntosh in a battle in the corner, that ball up in the air. Shatler getting in there as well. It's still loose, rolls in behind the goal and alertly Doug Jamison gets his stick out to stop that. Just over three minutes gone by here in the second quarter. New England Black Wolves have added to their lead early in the frame here. It's now six to one. And this crowd at Sastel Center, pretty darn quiet right now. Is that is a big stop by Adam Shute. Yeah, if Adam Shute can come in here and, and slam the door and let the rush train get a couple of goals, it'll go a long way for the momentum here in this one. Matthews to Connor Robinson, now here is Robert Church to the middle, fires, and Jamison was ready for that shot, getting down to make the save. I mean, looking calm, confident, relaxed, and poised, in perfect position to make that stop off of Church. Black Wolves, Nardella. Sends it across for LeBlanc and now heads to the bench. Stefan LeBlanc was quiet last week, just one assist, but had a career high 93 points a season ago. And he can go off at any time. And a push on the back there from McLean, a new 30 here for the Black Wolves. So New England retains possession. LeBlanc walks right in the middle and that rings right off the goal frame. That had some serious steam on it. There's just a lack of communication on defense there. You got to talk through those pick and rolls and a little too passive there in allowing that shooting lane. Reza Terrence for Crawford. Alan Crawford trying to pick his spot behind the back pass for Reza Terrence, doesn't work, but Q is there to regroup. Good job by Rubish though as he knocks that ball free, but he can't control that bouncing ball and Q still in there. The shot clock continues to tick down as no clear possession and McIntosh wisely waits for the expiry before picking up the ball. Uh, I was just about to say a welcome to the National Across League, Andrew Q, the patented Kyle Rubish stick check. Nobody Derek, does it better flex. Derek Keenan was uh, a little frustrated to see only one cause turnover on the stat sheet for Kyle Rubish. He thought, there's a goal. And I'll interrupt myself as Mark Matthews with a much needed tally. And the Rush fans are on their feet here at Sastel Center. Yeah, fortunate bounce there for 42. And maybe that'll be the spark that they need to get going here. Watch it again as Dinsdale looks into the middle. Good clear out pick there for Church. Defender actually deflecting that ball. And it bounced cleanly for Mark Matthews to pick up on the run. Fires low on the bounce past Jamison. 6-2 now with just over 10 minutes here to go to recess. Marty Dinsdale and Ryan Keenan picking up the helpers on that goal for Mark Matthews. His third of the season, second here tonight. We'll see if that will give the rush some extra life here five minutes into the second quarter. The first goal during the run of play here tonight for Saskatchewan. Keenan and Dinsdale picking up the apples there on that goal from Matthews. New England with another face-off win, though, as Rush unable to build off that goal. But it would have been great if they could get possession back once again, but they'll have to try to get the stop first. Five to play from Georgia, 11-6 swarm. Cross for Crawford. He's had his way here so far. There's a good save by Shute as he closed the five hole. Crawford was looking for it, and now we'll have possession given back to New England, but first, We'll take a timeout as we've played five and a half here in this second quarter. The New England Black Wolves lead the Saskatchewan Rush 6-2 on the National Lacrosse League Game of the Week.
Back inside, Sastel center. New England leading Saskatchewan 6-2. Let's send it down to four level where Daniela Ponticelli is standing by with New England head coach Glenn Clark. Thanks, Ryan. Coach, traditionally a very close bout between these two teams. A quick, quick start, a good lead. How do you keep that going for full 60? Well, you got to respect this team in the game. So we, you know, the challenge we had was was match their intensity, match their pace. And you know, I thought we started a little bit slow, got bailed out a little bit by Dougie, but we've kind of found our groove, and and, and it has. But it's been evenly played so far. All right, thanks, Coach. Back to you guys. Thanks so much, Daniela. Yeah, Glenn Clark has to be pretty satisfied with the way things have gone for his club so far. That's a very dapper looking professor this evening, all in gray. And uh, you're right, I think he's got to be ultimately thrilled with a 6-2 lead here, 9.30 to go in this second quarter. We know Saskatoon and Rush Nation, always a tough place to play here in Saskatoon. But I think the Black Wolves have done a good job of game management, got off to that quick start, and they've kind of held on to that lead here a little bit as the Rush try and claw back into this thing. And it's New England with possession out of the restart here. There's a Terrence, cross for LeBlanc. Now here's Andrew Q. Into the corner, into the middle, looking for O'Connor there, but missed that pass, and he was all alone. If he could have pulled that in cleanly. Now Rubish will hustle it up the floor for Saskatchewan. Now Ryan Dilks, but Mackenzie Mitchell off the bench is just takes it right away. Ryan Diltz did not even know he was coming. And I don't think Kyle Rubish did either. You don't see the veteran Rubish turn the ball over like that very often. You can tell he's disappointed himself. Look for Rubish to get the strip and recover. O'Connor coming right at R Kyle Rubish, directing a little traffic. Looks inside for Durston and a stick save and a big one there by Adam Shute. Yeah, I'm not sure if that hit the butt end or hit the crossbar. Either way, it stayed out, but Durston on a backdoor slip as he baits his defender and then ducks in behind him and got a good look on top of the crease. O'Connor to Crawford, spins away from McLean, now backs it up for Reseter, it's into the middle. Big check by Keenan, who's out there defensively, and now he's gonna be called for a loose ball push, I believe. Uh, and that came across the numbers there, and I think Keenan- He's gonna get a penalty in Yeah, uh, he's not happy about it, but it is, a, it is the right call here, as you'll watch it again on the replay. The slide came late and the, the player had the opportunity to turn his back to Keenan and he came right across the back of the numbers. Where's the penalty on that might be the question as Rubish that I think came after the penalty call on Keenan but first opportunity on the man up here for the Black Wolves and a penalty kill unit that really struggled last year for Saskatchewan. They end up seventh in the league by the end of things but we're near the bottom of the standings pretty much all season long and Colorado going three for four in their opening game a couple of weeks ago. So we'll see how it, they do against the Black Wolves. First power play for either side here tonight. Crawford takes and scores, makes short work of that man advantage. The Black Wolves power play that clicked on a three for seven basis last week gets their fourth goal of the season and it is a five goal lead, seven to two. Now, first one Adam Shute has allowed and it comes on the power play and it's a pinpoint shot there from Crawford. It goes up and over the shoulder to the far side. Crawford, one of the best at shooting on the run. And not a great angle there, but kept that stick up nice and high. And again, Flats, the stick head will see a lot more than what the actual eyeballs do. And Crawford knows that if he gets his stick up nice and high, he can get it up over the shoulder of Adam Shute and found the top corner on the power play to make it 7-2 Black Wolves here with 8-11 to go. And a response after Mark Matthews got the rush a little closer, the Black Wolves drawing the penalty and preventing the rush from getting any sort of run going. That's always important against this rush offense that can really score on you in bunches. Essinger taking that draw against Nardella who won it cleanly. So far the Black Wolves have had the advantage in pretty much every category. Out shooting the rush now 23-15. That's not something you see very often either. O'Connor behind the goal for Q. Back to O'Connor now. Here's Crawford as the Wolves rotate offensively. Reza Terrence, and that caught the outside of the post. I think Shute also got a piece. Now off the post or off the goaltender and out of play, it stays with the offensive team. Off wide of the goal, it goes to the defending team. And a great play there by Hasek as he knocked the ball out of Joe Reza Terrence's stick just as number 15 was taking the shot. Now Je Tra Jeff Cornwall and the goal in transition, a big one for the rush. It's Mike Messenger. Uh, that was spectacular there, and welcome back, Jeff Cornwall, Ryan Flaherty. 
picks up this ball, runs past LeBlanc, and then spots Messenger on the cut to the goal. It goes airborne and far side, hip high on Jamison as the rush answer back. A diving goal from Mike Messenger to make it 7-3 New England now with 7.28 to go. And that's something the Rush have said they need more of this season is transition scoring. You have to think Jeff Cornwall being back on the team has got to be a boost for that. Yeah, whether he scores them or helps create the chance, and that time it was for Messenger. And you told me, as here comes Thompson. Now Thompson right off the draw, and it's Jamison with a key stop that time. Battle for the loose ball, and Jamison will find it. There was a crease violation as well as Thompson ended up on the crease boundary. Yeah, and you told me about Mike Messenger's first year eight goals, second year nine goals, last year ten goals. So Mike Messenger has continually improved his production, gets off to a good start here in game two. So it's 7-3 New England here with exactly seven minutes to go in the opening half. Crawford, long shot, shoot, lets that one through the wickets, thought he had it, and then his head goes to the Raptors, and once again, the Black Wolves answer a rush goal with one of their own, and Callum Crawford makes it 8-3. to three. Uh, Showtime with his second, and this is a goal that shouldn't really go in on a National Lacrosse League goaltender. I don't know how else to say it. He's got to stop that ball, and that's really extra deflating here for the rush, who get that goal, they get the good vibes going, and then a softie gets past the goaltender, and that just takes the wind right out of your sails. Back to a five-goal lead here for the Wolfpack. And that is the hat-trick goal as well for Stefan LeBlanc, I believe. No, yes. that was Crawford's goal. Pardon me for Crawford. It is his hat-trick. Okay, my bad. Callum Crawford. And he's already got five points here tonight as the Wolves lead it by five. Possession awarded to New England off that face-off. Things just going the Black Wolves' way here in the opening 30 in Saskatoon. There's Crawford who just scored that goal. Looking for more. Could be a big night for him. He's already having himself a night. Reseter, it's into the middle looking for O'Connor. There's LeBlanc scooping it up. Now the dunk attempt, and that is good. A leaping Steph LeBlanc makes it 9-3 Black Wolves, and this crowd is in a bit of shock right now. I'll tell you what, I've watched Steph LeBlanc play in the National Lacrosse League for a long, long time. I think this might be the first goal I've ever seen Steph dunk, and he got up there to stick that one home past Adam Shute. And I wouldn't be surprised if we might see another goaltending change come here. Might not come now, but we might see Evan Kirk come back in for the second half. Still 6.26 to go. But Steph LeBlanc coming from behind the rack, going airborne and sticking that one on the short side. Nice goal there from 86. Joe Rezateritz and Riley O'Connor with assists on that goal as O'Connor already has five points here tonight. Rezateritz with four. There's a shot off the draw. Jamison with the save. Ball loose in the middle of the floor. Picked up by Chris Corbeil, who gets a brand new shot clock for the rush, who need to answer somehow, some way here late in this half. Shatler down for Connor Robinson. Cross. The shot comes from McIntosh. A rebound chance. Church backhander stopped by Jamison. Doug Jamison is answering the bell once again here this evening. Three goals, 20 shots here for the rush. You know, a veteran laden team, they're not going to panic, but they need to start shipping away. Crawford has Jeff Cornwall on him. Skips it across for Riley O'Connor. Connor and finds Durston and shoot, makes a big stop there. Rubish hustling back up the floor for Saskatchewan. Finds McIntosh off the bench, Ben McIntosh fires just high. Ball ricochets all the way back out to center, chance for the Wolves to have numbers here. LaFontaine, he's got Creighton Reed with him, but three rush players out the back door and Creighton Reed is going to Ladle it off for Stephen LeBlanc. A couple of former Toronto Rock teammates now together with the Black Wolves. Now here is Callum Crawford bringing it out of the corner. Wines and fires. Shoot gets down to make the save and now the rush with a chance in transition. McLean scooping it up. He's got Thompson ahead of him. Ryan McLean to the goal and it's stopped by Doug Jamison. Uh, an opportunity there for McLean. He's got to work his way to the front of the cage, give himself an angle there, kind of took the easy path towards the goal, and that's an easy save there for Jamison. Ryan McLean looking for his first NLL goal. Black Wolves, Durston. 
Cross for Crawford. Now a high feed for Kendra Q. Q from the middle, fires and shoot. Squeezes that one. Quickly up the floor, there's Messenger. Chance for Mike Messenger. Has Hasek, Messenger runs over a man, fakes oh. right off the post. Oh my goodness, Mike Messenger did everything there except for score. Uh, the building would have exploded right there if that one goes in. Now Watkinson working on Dilks. Ryan Dilks giving Watkinson the business. The patented forearm shiver from Messenger. Nobody does it better. And he wanted to do that. He didn't want to just take a shot. He wanted to cause some pain as well as that shot as it bounces wide and up high and over the glass. It never touched the net, so it'll be rush ball as we get to our final break here in the opening half of a half that has been very much in favor of the Black Wolves. They lead it nine to three. You're watching the National Lacrosse League Game of the Week. On February 1st, the San Diego Seals are making history and hosting the Colorado Mammoth for the first NLL game to be played in Las Vegas. For more information, visit sealslax.com slash Vegas. Vegas, baby! You Ryan going? Flaherty, I'm going, Ryan. Jake I'm Knight. going. It's always, you gotta go. It's Vegas, right? Ryan Flaherty alongside Jake Elliott, Daniela Ponticelli down at floor level as the New England Black Wolves lead the Saskatchewan Rush 9-3 to three here in the second quarter. Safe to say, I don't think this is what we expected here from the opening 26 minutes and change, Jake. Yeah, I, I, I expected a tight game, but right now, through the first two and a half quarters, two and three quarter quarters, the Black Wolves have dominated. It's the Rush trying to cut into the lead here. That shot from Church is wide of the goal. New England will pick it up and head the other way. Ty Logan got his first NLL point with an assist earlier tonight. A great save by Adam Shute. What a job coming across to Rob Callum Crawford, and maybe that will get the rush going. That is a big time stop there for Shooter. Here comes Jeff Cornwall straight down the middle of the floor, dishes off for Matthews, but great job by Creighton Reed coming back on Matthews, who was unable to take the pass because of that back pressure. Robinson, Connor Robinson now with some room. Takes the shot, bounces it in, but it's over top of the goal. Shot clock winding down. Robinson gets it off the end boards, but he's almost out of time. Great diving attempt, but Jamison knew that was the only option and was uh, able to make the save. Look at the hustle here, though, from Shatler and Robinson. They get the new 30. Shatler here. has it, had a man going to the net, but didn't know it, and he was being watched by two men, but still a great job by 77 to get a fresh shot clock, and Saskatchewan trying to get something rolling here late in the half. McIntosh and Church across for Keenan, takes the shot, and Jamison steps out and makes the save. Loose ball scooped up by the Wolves. Burns. Now here it comes, up the floor, Creighton Reed. Now he'll defer to Riley O'Connor as the rest of the Wolves offense gets out on the turf. O'Connor for Callum Crawford. Crawford fakes the pass, takes the shot, shoot with the arm save. LeBlanc finds the rebound and gets a new shot clock for the Wolves. LeBlanc back for Riley O'Connor. Takes a look up at the clock, which is now under two minutes to go here in the half. LeBlanc takes that shot in back. That was a pass looking behind the goal, but missed his man. And here comes Rubish, numbers for the rush. Rubish with Holden Garland. Takes the shot and scores! Oh, Kyle Rubish with a big goal in transition. It's nine to four. Rubes on pace for a career year, Ryan Flaherty with that one right there. He doesn't score often, but a beautiful bouncer in transition by number four. As he had Matthews coming off the bench, decided shooting was the better option, had a look across and then lets it go to the glove side on the bounce, just inside the pipe. 9-4, Black Wolves, 133 here to go to halftime. And you have to think if the Russian get another one here late in the half, they'll feel a lot better about things going into the break. So Rubish with his first of the season, an unassisted goal and the second transition marker for the rush here this evening. Early move by Nardella and this will give the rush possession after a goal and crowd into it here. Can they follow it up with another good set on offense? Matthews 
Walks into the middle, thinks about a shot, leaves it for Church. Church cutting inside. Now Matthews with face, misses the goal. That's a real good look for Matthews there. Usually one he'll put on target. Good job by Keenan to stay on side and avoid the over and back. Seven to shoot. Church being double teamed, can't get free. Ball knocked loose, low shot. Stopped by Jamison and Dinsdale trying to win the ball back, but nice work defensively that time by Creighton Reed. Uh, good veteran play there for Creighton Reed. So the Wolves now with 50 seconds remaining in the opening half, trying to get to double digits before recess. Crawford, little fake like he didn't know where the ball was. N nifty little play there by Crawford. Although the rush D weren't biting that time. Smart play here from shoot, and now the referee will blow play down immediately as the ball cut up on the back of the net. 35 seconds to go in the half, so a five second differential here. Down five, I don't think you can pull out of shoot, especially with the long change. But because Saskatchewan has not used their timeout, they'll call it here to talk it over. But I think it's a risky proposition to pull your goaltender. I know you're down five here. You still got a half a lacrosse to play. You got a long change. I think you got to go straight up five on five here. And maybe you start with shoot on the bench, start with six on the floor, back that defense off a little bit, but then you'll see a man come to the bench, shoot will be replaced, and they'll work that last 10 seconds of the shot clock five on five. Yeah, it looks like about a four second differential or perhaps a little bit more between the game clock and the shot clock. And of course, the rush can't take that time out with them into the half, so. We got the Grinch in the house and well Santa. Yeah, and the rush, the Black Wolves rather play in the Grinch role so far here tonight as they're They've come into town, and so far they've stolen a lot of the presents from the Who's in Whoville. Uh, well, 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 done. well done, Dr. Zeus. Crowd trying to get their team fired up for this last possession here in the half. Hasn't been a lot to cheer about for the Rush faithful, but it's a long night still to come, and they've seen their team rip off a bunch of goals in a row. In fact, the... Their one win against the Black Wolves since moving here to Saskatoon. They actually scored nine straight in the third quarter to rip that game open. So perhaps they can dial that up again as we have a, well, they're gonna set the clock to, looks like 30 seconds even. Yeah, so, so it's gonna be a five seconds. second differential between the game clock and the shot clock as Mark Matthews will have the ball off the restart and shoot just a few feet outside his crease. Yeah, just before we get this final possession here, it is a final from Georgia, 12-6. Swarm 2-0, wings 0-1. And so the Black Wolves looking to keep pace with their divisional rivals this evening, and they're halfway there. Now Shoot is going to head to the bench with 18 seconds, but now he fakes that and goes back towards his crease. Just a little dummy play as that passes over the head of Matthews, and a good thing that Shoot went back to the goal crease because there's still time for the Black Wolves in transition. The oh. pass, though, just out of the reach of Colton Watkinson, and that will take us to halftime as the rush with some work to do in the final 30, but the New England Black Wolves, on the other hand, well, they are pretty darn happy with the way these first two quarters have played out. They lead it 9-4. to 31-26, shots on goal, 9-4 Black Wolves, and that is about as picture perfect as a road half as you can play here for New England. And we'll take a look at a couple of the highlights here from the opening half at the New England Black Wolves. There's one of the latest goals of beauty by Stefan LeBlanc. That was the eighth, I believe. Very close to the crease on the back end there too, but uh, good goal and that opening goal as well. Here's the one from Rubish on the run. Has a look to Matthews and then says, you know what, I'm taking this one and sticks it past Jamison in transition. So the New England Black Wolves, as you mentioned, Jake, with a pretty good script here through 30 minutes. They just really have to keep the program running here into the second half. Yeah, as I it mean, looks like we have uh, Daniela Ponticelli down at floor level. Looks like she's got uh, Jordan Durston down with her. So let's send it down to Daniela. Thanks, guys. Yes. The Black Wolves out with a very quick start here, but you, you even forced a goaltender change on the rush side. Uh, what was the thinking coming into this game to get this much of a lead? Yeah, I mean, uh, coming here with their crowd and whatnot, and them being one of the uh, better teams in the league, uh, you just got to come here and try and weather the storm with them, I think. And uh, I mean, our first couple shifts were a little sloppy, but we ended up getting a couple uh, quick goals there. So I mean, a uh, good start, but that's all it is. Now, in terms of uh, what you're going to do in the next half, uh, any thinking there? Just play our game, continue doing what we're doing. Um, 
biggest thing with us, I think, is just trying to uh, match them. So if their offense scores, we need to score. If they're running, we need to be running with them. We just uh, we just need to be ready to go here. They're a good team. Uh, anything can happen here. So yeah, just be ready for them. Thanks so much, Jerson. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thanks so much, Daniela and Jordan Durston. Yes, so we are here at halftime and coming up on NLL at the half, Devin Caney spent the day with Thunderbirds captain Cody Jamison and his teammates. We'll have that coming up. You're watching the National Lacrosse League. Last week, the new Halifax Thunderbirds opened their season with a 12-4 victory over the New York Riptide. It's one thing to captain a team, another challenge entirely to lead it to success in a brand new city. But if anyone can rise to the occasion, it's former NLL MVP Cody Jamison. Devin Caney spent the day with the Thunderbirds captain and his teammates in Halifax last week. Here's Huddle Up with Cody Jamison. And the bat came along. A bat. What team would the bat be on? Wing. Wing. I would say so too. The bat went to the winged animals and said, I'm on you guys' team. The winged animals said, no, you're not on our team. You don't have no feathers. Look around. Look at us. We all have feathers. You can't be on our team. You're not a bird. The bat was discouraged. He went to the four-legged animals. He even said, they won't let me on their team. I'm on you guys' team. Four-legged animals said, you're not on our team. Look around, you don't look like us. I heard you telling the kids a story. Can you tell me what that was? What story were you telling them? I was telling a story about uh, you know, our creation story and how lacrosse was, was given to us. The four-legged animals let them, ended up letting the bat play on their team. You know, when the birds had the ball, they would be up in the sky flying. And the four-legged animals just had to run on the ground and wait for the bird to drop the ball so they could pick it up. Vice versa, when the four-legged animals had the ball, they had to wait to pass. So when I pass it, a bird would try and swoop in and grab it. That's how the ball got changed from team to team. But there's only one animal who could do both, who could fly really high with the birds and who could fly low between the, between the trees and everything. What animal was that? The bat. So the game ended up 1-0. Who, who scored the game-winning goal? The bat. That story got told to me by my grandpa because he kind of knew I was always going to be a little bit shorter than everybody else and maybe a little bit heavier than everybody else. It's a story that's, that's passed on through generations, obviously. And um, when I was younger and, and uh, you know, getting told that story, it kind of resonated with me a little bit more because I always knew I was, I was smaller and I wasn't really, you know, I didn't look like a, your prototypical like lacrosse player that I was going up against all the time. So lacrosse wasn't given to us to be for only one person to play or the tallest person is going to be the best player or the fastest person is going to be the best player. Lacrosse was given for everybody to enjoy. Now that I'm older and I have kids, it hits home to me more now, um, dealing with everything that this society deals with, um, you know, not being accepted and, and things along that nature. I just like to show the kids especially that uh, you know, lacrosse is accepting for everybody. Everybody, you know, the bear, the hawk, the eagle, no matter what you look like, no matter how big, how small, how fast, how, how slow, there's a spot in lacrosse for everybody. And that's kind of why I enjoy lacrosse so much is because, you know, there's a spot, there's a place on the team for everybody. It doesn't matter what kind of shoes I'm wearing or what color my hair is or, you know, what color my skin is. It doesn't matter. Lacrosse is made for everybody to play and everybody to enjoy. You know, I just hope to see, like, the other kids who may not get picked first in gym class um, and to show that they got a, sp a spot in this sport. Okay, so we're gonna enjoy today. That's my little story. Long, <laughs> long story. story. What a good story. <laughs> what a good story. Not for stats. All right, thanks so much for that, Devin. And of course, there'll be another part of that. Looking forward to seeing that next week as We'll send it to break. We'll have more coming up here on NLL at the half. Welcome back inside Sastel Center and a bit of a surprise here at halftime. Ryan Flaherty, Jake Elliott, the New England Black Wolves leading the Saskatchewan Rush 9-4 to four and pretty much having their way with the Rush throughout that first half. Yeah, a little surprised to see this scoreline, quite frankly. But on the other hand, maybe the Black Wolves are for real this year. They came off that victory against Toronto and looked impressive in that. 
on the road. They come here to Saskatchewan, another tough place to play, and they got themselves a five-goal lead at halftime here. Crawford with six points, O'Connor with four, and they're rolling here and dominating the faceoff dot as well. Absolutely, yeah, the numbers extremely slanted in favor in that stat category of the New England Black Wolves. In fact, they've won, I think, two-thirds of the draws here so far, but they have had possession of the ball seemingly throughout the entire half, so it's no surprise that they have the advantage on the scoreboard. Yeah, I think 13-2, and two, something like that for Nardella in the faceoff dot, and when you keep coming up with possession after possession like that, it's easy to keep momentum on your side and keep rolling downhill, and when your goaltender like Dougie Jameson is playing right now too, that's going to give you a whale of confidence that he's going to make the stops he needs. That gives you an opportunity to get out on the break a little bit more as well. And the Black Wolves, it's been an emphasis that they want to run this season. And when your goaltender is making stops and coming up and controlling rebounds as well, that gives you an opportunity to get out on the break, as you see here. And Evan Kirk uh, made a couple saves early, but also let a couple through that he normally saves and uh, that led us to a goaltending change after the sixth New England goal. Here's a penalty shot tally by Mark Matthews. That made it two to one, but then it was all Black Wolves after that. Yeah, and Matthews has got two goals. He's got an outside shot in the slot and he's got that penalty shot. The other two have come from Messenger and Kyle Rubish in transition. So you would expect guys like Church, McIntosh, Dinsdale, Keenan, Shatler. These guys got to get going here in the second half if the Rush want a chance to come back in this game. And we'll be, uh, I'm interested to see who comes out to start in net here for Saskatchewan in the second half. I think it's going to be Adam Shute, but it wouldn't surprise me if they go back to their number one guy here in Evan Kirk and try and get his confidence back. And we saw Callan Crawford there, and he's had a monster first half. Already six points here tonight after seven last week in Toronto, and he's just having a rush. Yeah, and like you said, 48 goals last year, one of his best years in his long, illustrious career. And he's off to another great start here in 2019-2020. So the rush with a significant amount of work to be done here in the second half. The New England Black Wolves, well, they're 30 minutes away from one of the bigger wins they've had in quite some time. We are excited to see what happens in the second half as we go to our final break here on NLL at the half. The NLL on BR Live is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com to see how much you could save. And by Alterna Bank, Canada's end-to-end -end digital bank. Alterna puts the good in banking. Visit AlternaBank.ca to learn more. All right, back live inside Sastel Centre, and we are underway here in the third quarter. All the whistle, let's play some lacrosse. And it's the New England Black Wolves keeping in with the theme of the first half, gaining possession off the faceoff, something they did a lot of in that opening 30. They have the five goal lead. Looking to add to it early in this third quarter. That pass though, intercepted by Kyle Rubish, who else? And he comes back up the floor. He's got a man with him, takes the shot and scores! Kyle Rubish, the sniper, he's got two tonight. Are you kidding me, Kyle Rubish? Look at the smiles on the rush bench. I don't know if Kyle Rubish has ever scored two goals in a game. Never mind a season, Ryan Flaherty. His career Check high that is weapon. Four. Check that weapon right there for Kyle Ribbish. He's got two tonight, and the rush get exactly what they needed here, Flats. A goal early to start this second half. They're within four, and the crowd is alive. You talked about it late in that second quarter as Kyle Rubish had a giveaway, and you mentioned that he would be looking to make up for it. Well, he has certainly done so right there, taking that pass away and heading up the floor, doing it all himself, and getting the rush a much needed positive start to this second half. New England though winning yet another face off. Yeah, and they really dominated that category in that first half and that's an area that they're going to have to improve on. Just try and create the 50-50 ball. There's a Terrence cutting inside, made the pass late. And by There's the way, it is Adam Shoot who starts the second half here, not Evan Kirk. Shoot has allowed three goals here tonight after coming in in relief of the starter Evan Kirk. That shot beat him but hit the post. This is up for a free reset here and Emela's got it. Emela getting that loose ball and finds Andrew Q. The dynamic rookie in this Black Wolves offense. Skips it across. Does it Terrence back for Stefan LeBlanc. Looking for an opening. 
Can't find one. Looked like that might have caught a piece of the man, but no, it's the shot clock continues to wind down. LeBlanc with a long distance try over top of the net. Yeah, it deflected off a rush defender, Ryan, and I think that's something they need to do a better job of here in the second half is getting bodies and getting sticks in the lanes. Too many times New England was getting free open looks at the goal. So an important stop to open the half after getting the goal, and you'll see if the rush can build off it now here. They've yet to string two goals together here tonight. Dinsdale stopped by Jamison, and Ty Logan will try to get the outlet, but Jeff Shatler hammers him to the turf, and the crowd likes that, but Ty Logan, credit to him, getting right back up and hanging on to the ball. Uh, Shatler, no stranger to playing on the back end as well. Former MVP in transition back with the Roughnecks. And transition player of the year as well that season. is Durston, or rather Crawford to O'Connor, but he misses the target, and he had a point-blank attempt there. My goodness, that was about as open as you could get, and... I hate to say it right now, Ryan Flaherty, but they are really picking on 65 in green right now. They are exposing Ryan McLean, and he's got to get it together here. Corbiel being hassled. No, ball knocked free, but Robert Church is there to scoop it up. Still 15 to shoot for the rush. Ryan Keenan, a little stutter step, now working on LaFontaine. Good help from Malcolm, though. Now backs it up for Matthews. Tries to get that low shot, but has the ball knocked out of his stick before he could take it. Back come the Wolves. Malcolm in transition and shoot with the save. And it's interesting to see Tony Malcolm playing in a transition role as well. One of the quickest players in the league side to side, but he can move up the floor pretty quickly as well, and he's got some offensive touch to go along with it. Had a couple of points last week. Has an assist here tonight. Does Tony Malcolm as Matthews fires? That stopped, and Mark Matthews into the corner trying to pick up the loose ball, but it is the Black Wolves who get it, but we are going to have power play. a penalty call coming here against New England, and yeah. it looks like the Rush are getting their first power play of the game. And Nardella got across the back of number 90, Ben McIntosh, who's still feeling that one. But you know what happens when this that sort of thing happens is Ben McIntosh is usually going to be the one that sticks it in the goal. So first power play opportunity for the rush tonight. A chance to build on that momentum on the quick start from Rubish. Down four, let's see if they can cut it to three here on the man up. The rush were three for four with the man advantage in their season opening win against Colorado. Church behind the back for McIntosh, drops the ball, gets it back, and now back to Church. Up for Matthews. Steps in now, passes for Shatler who misses the net. Good bounce though for Church, comes right to him. Keenan drops the pass, tries to swipe it to Matthews, but that would be an over and back, so it'll be New England ball here and they'll get to start it deep in rush territory yeah, as not, well. Not the sharpest opening set there on the five on four. Look to clean that up when they get their next opportunity. An opportunity, speaking of which, for the Black Wolves to kill some valuable time here on this penalty. Crawford, patient, looking for an opening. Takes the pass. One hand on the stick as he cradles it. Good Whoa. shot of that ring right off the crossbar. Comes all the way back down the floor. Now a race for it. Messenger gets to it first for the rush. Mike Messenger will slow it down, though, as Saskatchewan will get their power play unit back out on the floor. And Messenger still looking as strong as ever, but it looks like he's picked up a step as well. Yeah, he's trimmed down just a little bit coming into this season as Mike Messenger, and I think he's better for it. Church. Taking the return pass, point blank, stopped by Jamison. But a reset and a fresh 30, Mark Matthews settling things down. Quarterbacking this power play. Matthews to Church, shot over top of the goal, and that rebounds into the crowd. It'll be New England taking over possession with 38 seconds left on the penalty. Yeah, Rob Church was hot in Colorado. His shot has been just a little bit off here tonight on home floor. He's had some open looks, but hasn't been able to find the target. But again, Dougie Jamison standing tall here for New England. Robert Church still looking for his first point here tonight as Colton Watkinson making a move, takes himself out of the play as well. Now a big check near the boards by McIntosh, knocks the ball free. Kyle Rubish takes over for Saskatchewan. Still as time Randy O'Connor is collecting himself and trying to figure out where he is. Now you can feel a different energy here in the second half. A lot of more, a lot of, a lot of more hits and just the energy is higher here for Saskatchewan. Church and Matthews go back and forth. Church takes, that just missed and almost took out McIntosh behind the net. Power play just about over here. Shatler 
As the man steps out of the box, back to even strength, a big kill, and a good job by Matthews as Nardella was making a beeline for that pass. Back come the Black Wolves after successfully killing off that power play just the second time this season of the rush have failed to capitalize on a man advantage. Durston, under nine and a half to go in the second quarter, or for read the third quarter. Resiteritz, spinning, backs it up for LeBlanc. Down low, looking for that quick stick, but crease violation on the Black Wolves, and that'll take us to a timeout here with 9.07 to go in the third quarter. The Rush have scored the only goal so far in the second half. They still trail by four in the National Lacrosse League Game of the Week. Back inside Sastel Center and Daniela Ponticelli is standing by down at floor level with Rush head coach and GM Derek Keenan. Coach, tell me quick, you had to make a goalie change in the first half. Things are picking up speed here now for the Rush. Uh, what was the thinking going into this one? Well, I just think our compete wasn't as good as it should be in the first half. Much better here so far. we got to execute better on offense, so especially the fundamental part of the game. We're missing the net on a lot of real real quality looks, so we got to be better there. We're getting back in here, though, from a better perspective, and certainly from a compete. Thank you so much for your time, Coach. Back to you guys. Thanks very much, Daniela. Yes, uh, Derek Keenan not used to trailing at the half here at home, but lots of little time left here as the Rush have trimmed yeah. that lead a little bit here early in the third. Yeah, and I don't think he's used to his team getting outworked either. And I made mention of that in the opening half, and, and the head coach and the general manager kind of backing up that statement that he didn't think his team's compete level was where it needed to be in that opening half. I think it's here now as we're back underway with nine minutes to go in this third quarter. Derek Keenan wearing the Christmas tie, but not feeling all that jolly so far here tonight. They'll feel a lot better if his team can keep up what they've done to start the half of McIntosh. Fires over top of the net. Matthews shoulder checked and the ball knocked loose as he was about to take this shot. Yeah, that was oh. going to be spectacular there if Matthews could have got that one on target. Uh, quick chance to let you know, stay up to date on all things National Lacrosse League. The news, announcements, and exclusive prizes with the National Lacrosse League newsletter. Sign up now at NLL.com. Already done it. I know you have too, Ryan Flaherty. I did it twice. Just in case, because I've got two email addresses. Fair enough. As Crawford tries to make the pass, but sticks in the lane that time for the rush. And now a chance in transition. Corbeil heading up the floor with Holden Garland. Garland with the ball. Holden Garland. Good job by John Lafontaine, though, taking the angle away from the first round pick. And a good decision from Garland not to try and force it. McIntosh with a wicked shot. The crowd thought it was in, but that was off the boards in the back of the net. This is why the mesh rippled that time. So a false alarm there for the home faithful. Nardella sends it quickly up the floor. Tchaikovsky. Now he'll dish it off to Joe Rezateritz and head to the bench. Joey Rezateritz, two years removed from a 100-point season. Now here's LeBlanc. Ball knocked out of his stick by Hasek. Picked up by Durston. His pass is intercepted by Messenger, ah. but we have a loose ball push on the rush, so the ball will go right back to New England. Uh, Joey Rez, I believe, the first American-born player to hit the 100-point plateau. So O'Connor with a fresh shot clock now. And winding and firing there with the stop by Adam Shute, who will have to be strong here in this second half to allow his team to get back in this game. Pass out for Rez Terrence. Looking for a lane. Now it bounces one, but it's over top of the net. And we got a push regardless, and either way, the rush get the ball. Ryan Dilks with it. Or pardon me, that's Travis Cornwall, 20, not 24. Look for a good set here for the rush. Work at 30, make that defense work. Connor Robinson bringing it out of the corner. Over for Marty Dinsdale. Now Robert Church just waiting to break out. Shatler shot right on, stop by Jamison. Uh, Burn gets the rebound, but steps into the crease, so uh, it'll be call. rush ball. Connor Robinson with it. It's a well-timed cross-check to put the defender back into his own crease to get the possession back. Church drops that pass. Now has to track it down along the boards. Ty Logan on his back. Gets it to Dinsdale. A little bit of room. And Jamison stepping out confidently to make that save. Shatler with the fresh shot clock. Goes back and forth with McIntosh. That shot was partially blocked. 
harmlessly bounces in on goal. Okay. Now a chance as Manny brings it up. The Black Wolves captain with the shot and stop by Adam Shute. Another big stop by the rush netminder. It really is. That's an important stop there for Adam Shute. And another opportunity in transition for New England. Ryan Keenan now. As Mark Matthews tries to clear some space, cuts towards the goal, but well guarded. Now Keenan takes the shot low. Jamison gets to it, and it trickles wide. Tchaikovsky bringing it up the floor. Under six to play here in the third quarter. A lot fewer goals to speak of in this second half thus far. Just one, and it belongs to the rush, but they still trail nine to five. Durston for Andrew Q. And the rush pressuring up high once again. That forces a bad pass. Messenger will scoop it up. And another good defensive set for Saskatchewan. Here comes Chris Corbeil. Yeah, I think they've sorted some things out defensively as well for the, the rush. New England not getting nearly as good a looks as they were in the opening half. Shatler takes the pass and scores! What a two-man game that time, and Jeff Shatler's done that a time or two. It's nine to six. Mailman with a couple of goals, and now the mailman delivering a beautiful assist to Jeffrey Shatler as they'll set this up as the game goes along. Defenders waiting for that hard screen for Shatler, kind of hold that pick and allow Matthews to come off it. But that time, communication on the bench. All right, this time I'm not going to do that. I'm going to slip off this. Look for me, I'm going to go quickly. So Matthews knows that Shatler's not going to hold that pick. He's going to roll to the goal really fast. So he's ready to pass that ball and put it right in the stick. Shatler able to reach to the far side and beat Jamison. Rush within three with just over five to go in quarter three. And for the first time tonight, the Rush have scored consecutive goals. They have the only offense in this second half thus far. Two goals to cut that five goal lead to three here with five minutes to go in this third quarter. It's the first goal of the season for the 15th year pro, Jeff Shatler. And I'll tell you what, Jeremy Thompson has long been the Russia's favorite player here in Saskatchewan, but with Shatler and the Shatler Lacrosse Academy doing yeoman's work here in the province of Saskatchewan, slowly the cheers are getting louder for 77. Yeah, he's quickly becoming an adopted son of Saskatchewan as that shot is stopped by Adam Shute, who had to get low. There was room there, but he closed it off just in time. Now quickly up ahead for Connor Robinson as the rush starting to feel some good vibes Next here in this third quarter. Is a biggie. Ben McIntosh, he's been quiet tonight. He's capable of going off at any moment. Dinsdale watched by Manny, takes the shot from outside, but Jamison was ready that time. He makes the stop. The Wolves still looking for their first goal of this second half. Emila, he had the opening goal of the game early in the first quarter. Backs it up for LeBlanc. Andrew Q switching places over to Crawford. Be ready to help. Crawford trying to back his man in, but Chris Corbeil is a pretty tough customer on that back end. That's a great matchup between two Wiley veterans. Going to timeout, but as the rush get the stoppage, and they have had all the momentum here in this third quarter. They have cut the lead to three. It's 9-6 New England. You're watching the National Lacrosse League Game of the Week. New England Black Wolves leading the Saskatchewan Rush 9-6, thanks in large part to the play of Callum Crawford. He's had a big game so far, and here's some of the work that he did all in that first half. Crawford on a mission here tonight, especially in that opening half. Three and three, well-balanced attack. There's the corkscrew. We've seen the outside game. We've seen the inside game. We've seen the pinpoint laser shooting and the distribution from 98. His nickname is Showtime, and he's living up to that bill here tonight. Already 13 points in his first two games of the season for Callum Crawford, as once again Cameron Hughes doing his thing inside the building. And this rush crowd is as loud as it's been all night long. They're hoping for a third straight goal from their team as Saskatchewan starts out of the timeout with possession. Marty Dinsdale, Mark Matthews, and he was in between decisions there and this lost control of the ball indecisive from Mark Matthews and it leads to a turnover New England 
takes over, they'll happily take that. Yeah, a little double clutcher there from Matthew Sutton. Schaller was going to be deep in the corner. He was engaged with his defender, tried to hold up on the pass, but it rolled out of the pocket. Turnover on Saskatchewan. Does it Terrence and Crawford go to work on that right side? Does it Terrence back for O'Connor now? LeBlanc trying to get around Dilks, wow. but that's easier said than done. Like he never missed a beat. Ryan Dilks right back in the mix and up the floor. Jeff Cornwall. Watched by a man, so leaves it for Keenan, who has Brett Manny standing in between him and the goal, so nothing there right now for Ryan Keenan, but still plenty of time on the shot clock. 15 to shoot for the rush as McIntosh completes the change. Takes the low shot. Jameson got just enough. No, it just skipped wide. No reset. Keenan behind the net for McIntosh. For Dinsdale, low shot. And re reading the play perfectly was Doug Jamison. Oh, uh, McIntosh had Jamison leaning to the wrong side of the goal. Tried to pull the string on him to the short side and just missed. That would have been that next goal to get the rush within two. It's still a three goal spread here. Oh, New England still without a goal in this third quarter. Can Andrew Q change that? Makes the pass, but Riley O'Connor couldn't pull it down. Ball still with New England, though. Coming out of the corner, Reza Terrence and Adam Shute, who's been very good here in this third quarter, makes another save. Yeah, I don't think that can go unnoticed here tonight. The job that Adam Shute has done coming in relief of Evan Kirk. So Matthews over to Dinsdale and now Church. Robinson takes the pass. Now back for Mark Matthews and Church. Tries to find a lane. Jamison stepped out and made, made that save. That's a better shot there for Church. Test the goaltender. Make him make a stop. Matthews with two goals here tonight. Church now into the middle, but there is moving pick. Yeah, a moving pick by the Saskatchewan rush. So possession awarded to the New England Black Wolves with a minute and a half to go here in the third. Riley O'Connor. I had him down with five points in the first half, but online game sheet says four. Either way, a good night here for Riley O'Connor after being held pointless in the Black Wolves season opener. LeBlanc. Shepherded into the end boards by Hasek. Keeps possession of the ball though. Now ladles it off for Durston who takes the shot. Stopped by Shoot. What Durston a loose ball. Trying to find that ball, but Ryan Dilks oh. smooth like silk. That was a one-handed wow. snare and then the twirl of the wand to come up with the pill. Beautiful. He is so fired up to be back. We talked about Jeff Bornwell. Ryan Dilks is just as excited to be back with his rush mates this season. Well, you know who else is fired up, Flats? And that's Papa Dilks. Got to get a shout out to Papa Dilks and the Shadow, who I know are tuned in here tonight. One of the National Lacrosse League's best fans in the world. Absolutely. And uh, Grandma Rush in the house tonight for this one he as well. Sure is. Speaking of super fans. Callum Crawford now taking over. 30 seconds to play in the quarter, but about a 15 second or 12 second differential with the shot clock. So Jameson staying put. Emila for Q. Shot clock winding down. Reza Terrence takes it, shoot with the save. And Gotta here go comes the rush. 15 seconds, so still enough time to get it up the floor and find a late goal. On the fly here Rubich, for the rush. Why not? He's got two already. Back for McIntosh, five seconds to go. Matthews. For McIntosh, takes the shot, and Jamison was ready. That'll do it for the third quarter. A good look for McIntosh to end the frame. The Rush whittle into that lead. They get the only two goals of the quarter, and it is now 9-6 New England as we go to break. We'll be back with the fourth quarter. You don't want to miss it. It's an NLL. Just about set for the fourth quarter. The Saskatchewan Rush at home trailing the New England Black Wolves by a score to nine, of nine to six. But Kyle Rubish doing everything in his power to spark his boys here this evening. Yeah, he's played really well. Problem is, I think Rubish might be their leading scorer, and that's not something you want to see having one of your best checkers be your leading scorer. But he's done a real nice job on both ends of the floor here, and he's given the Rush a chance to come back into this game trailing by just three with 15 minutes to play. Two goals for Kyle Rubish, two goals for Mark Matthews, and one apiece for Mike Messenger and Jeff Shatler. As for the New England Black Wolves, Callum Crawford with the hat trick, Stefan LeBlanc, Jordan Durston, Andrew Q, Reza Terrence, Dave Emila, Riley O'Connor all scoring singles, so good. Even offensive distribution for the Black Wolves is we talked about earlier tonight. They have a lot of different weapons and they've all found the score sheet here tonight. Fourth quarter set to go, blow the whistle, let's place him across. And Jeremy Thompson with, well, looked like he was gonna win that draw, but a good second effort by the Black Wolves to win the ball back. 
from 74, and they'll get their offense going. Yeah, sometimes it's not about who comes up with it, it's who can get away with it, and that was the case there. Thompson had it, got a check loose, Blackwells get possession. Crawford, speaking of check loose, has the ball knocked out of his stick, and a pair of rush defenders on him, but Crawford battling hard to try to win it back. Still loose along the wall, and finally scooped up by the rush captain, Chris Corbeil. Longest serving captain in the National Lacrosse League now with Dan McRae going to New York. Still a captain, but longest serving team captain is Chris Corbeil. With the same team, you're absolutely right, Jake, as Keenan to Church, and now here's Ben McIntosh. Looking back for Church, misses that, but Keenan follows up. Here's McIntosh once again, cutting towards the goal, and he misses over top. Shot clock is down, and that'll be a shot clock violation against the rush, something you don't see very often. Uh, McIntosh again, just kind of like Robert Church tonight, has been just a little bit off with his shot. He's had looks, but just missing by inches. So it's such a strange thing to see a game in the fourth quarter where those two are combined for zero points. Crawford. Now O'Connor in the middle. Great passing by the Black Wolves. Oh, what a save. What a stop by shoot. Wow. That was fine. Some fine lacrosse we just saw right there from Watch both sides. This again from Adam Shoe going post to post for highway robbery right there with the stick. Beautiful passing and an even better save from the rush. Netminder a big, big stop as McIntosh dives but misses with that crease dive. Again, just a little bit off. Dinsdale, though, gets the ball back. Under 10 on the shot clock. Matthews oh. takes it. That missile just missing the top corner. And I now thought that went through the net. The Black Wolves in transition right on, and shoot comes up with another critical stop. The crowd trying to give their team some life here as the New England Black Wolves have put up a stout defense here tonight against this high-powered rush offense. And Saskatchewan needs to keep on doing what they were doing in the second quarter, but they need to up the tempo maybe just a little bit. Big battle in the middle. Ball bouncing around and LaFontaine comes up with it for the pack. He's got Reed cutting through the middle, but he wisely slows it down. He'll let his offense get on the floor and the clock. Now definitely the friend of the Black Wolves. It's certainly not dicey time right now, but they'll be happy to milk as many possessions as they can. Again, next goal is massive in this one. O'Connor for Q. Andrew Q back for O'Connor. Great give and go, and O'Connor scores. The first goal of the second half for the Wolves is a big one. It's 10-6 New England. Yeah, that's crushing. And O'Connor's been getting that look over and over again. And it's not the greatest angle for him, but he's left so open that he's got time to pick his spot. And you give a shooter like Riley O'Connor that kind of time and space. I don't care if he's on the left side, the right side, the wrong side, whatever. You give him that kind of room, he's gonna find the back of the goal as he goes up and over the shoulder of Adam Shoot with no chance. And it's back to a four goal lead here for New England with 12-12 to play. Second goal of the night and the season for Riley O'Connor. Andrew Q with a great feed and he sure doesn't look like a rookie out there, Jake. He's, he's been solid here tonight. Rush off the draw, Holden Garland coming right for goal, and Jamison makes the stop as Holden Garland made a bid for his first NLL goal. I can't overstate it again how solid Douglas J. Jamison is playing here tonight. Yeah, he's now made 34 saves on 40 rush shots as they have narrowed the gap on the shot clock. It is now 42-40 in favor of New England. It's Crawford coming in, stopped by shoot. Crawford, though, gets no to it in a way. reverse dunk, but a crease violation wow. on Callum Crawford as that was acrobatic, but doesn't count. That was ridiculous is what that was. Now looking for Keenan in front of the goal, but he's knocked down. It's a loose ball push, though. It'll be rush ball and a fresh shot clock. Brian Keenan, little head fake. Trying to work around, Byrne does, gets the shot away, but Jamison once again is there with the answer. As Malcolm sprints up the floor. Dishes off for Callum Crawford, who takes up his usual spot. Stefan LeBlanc, the veteran. Messenger on him, and he gets checked up high. Now Reza Terrence 
Trying to work inside, but double teamed. Backs it up for Crawford. A hot pass. Too hot to handle that time. Now a two-on-one battle in favor of the rush, and they win that loose ball battle. Ryan Dilts coming up with it. And one thing New England is really doing offensively is setting hard picks. They're blowing up rush defenders, and they're doing it because they're not getting called on it, and they're really pushing the envelope. Oh, Shatler just missed the top corner there. Church picks up the loose ball and misses wide. Mackenzie Mitchell trying to make a pass while going down, but that's a recipe for a turnover, and Robert Church says thank you very much for that and a fresh shot clock for the rush offense. Robinson to Church. Now Shatler takes the shot. A little Took a little off at that time, trying to fool Jameson. But once again, Dougie J with the stop. Matthews to Church. And there is Marty Dinsdale. Dinsdale. Shatler trying to clear some room for number 32. Now to Church down low. Good job by Tchaikovsky to come over and take it away from Church before he could take the shot. Now Ty Logan will wait for the Wolves offense to hop over the boards. O'Connor. He's had a solid game, Ty Logan. Absolutely, another rookie in this Wolves lineup. Reza Terrence, hot shot, didn't miss by much. Crawford trying to find that loose ball behind the net, but it's Jeff Cornwall who scoops it up for Saskatchewan. Under 10 to go in this fourth quarter and the rush still trailing by four. Ben McIntosh, been frustrated all night. Maybe this is his moment, and he can't find one that time on Jamison, who stood tall. Man, is he ever playing well. A breakout year, perhaps, for Jamison on the way. He's backed up his season opening performance with another one as Dilks with the takeaway and the breakaway. Dilks stopped again by Jamison. That is a clutch stop there for the Black Wolves goaltender. And listen, this is a kid who has won a lot of big lacrosse games. He's played in a lot of big games, and it took him a while to kind of get his feet underneath him here at the National Lacrosse League level, but it looks like Dougie Jamison has settled in and become the number one man here in New England. Well, with a backup who has never played a minute of NLL action in Ethan Woods, you know that Doug Jamison is the man this year. And and that can go a long way for you as a goaltender, knowing you're going to be the guy, regardless of whether you have a poor outing or not. You're going to be the guy, and everybody's going to rely on you, and that can go a long way for you. As Church passes it to Matthews across for McIntosh, stopped by Jamison. And I mean, if a guy like Glenn Clark thinks he's good enough to be a starter, I think you have to give that some pretty good, pretty solid weight as well. That guy's won a few big lacrosse games as well. He knows a little bit about the sport, does the professor. Brett Manny for LeBlanc as the New England Black Wolves in full control here right now. The rush looked like they were gaining some momentum in that third quarter, but the Black Wolves have done a tremendous job of slowing that run down. And for the rush, this four goal deficit must feel like about 10 right now. Yeah, they gotta start chipping away and doing it right now if they're gonna come back into this game. They're starting to run out of possessions here as we're approaching seven to go. Halfway through the fourth quarter. Dinsdale into the middle. Low shot. Jameson reading it well. He's been on top of it. Outlet pass, a long one up ahead is too far for Mitchell, so Corbeil will take advantage of that, and the rush will get a fresh shot clock here and get their offense right back on the floor. Maybe his first mistake of the game, really. McIntosh getting a pick. Leaves it for Shatler. Shatler trying to get away from Watkinson, does. He's picked up in the middle though. Now Robinson picks up the loose ball, under 10 on the shot clock and the Wolves. Defense just disrupting the flow of this rush offense. They are not getting any opportunity to run their sets. And that'll bring us to our timeout here as we have 6.33 to go in this fourth quarter. The rush in trouble, down four late in the game. You're watching the National Lacrosse League Game of the Week. Welcome back inside Sastel Center. 6.33 here to go in the fourth quarter. New England up by four, 10 to six on the Saskatchewan rush. Vance, 
next weekend. The NOL is back in action next Saturday with two exciting games kicking off the Saturday slate. Sean Evans and the Rochester Nighthawks head to Halifax for a faceoff with Kyle Jackson and the Thunderbirds. Then it's Dylan Ward and the Colorado Mammoth. Visit the Calgary Roughnecks and Curtis Dixon, the defending champions, the NOL game of the week. Catch it all on BR Live and the league's Twitter and Facebook channels. Great to have the NLL Game of the Week this season and glad to be bringing the very first one to you tonight from wherever you may be watching. Thanks for joining us as we get set for six and a half more minutes of fourth quarter action. Ryan Flaherty alongside Jake Elliott, Daniela Ponticelli down at floor level and the Black Wolves in full command here looking for their second road win in as many weeks. 10 to six they lead and Crawford just missed a chance to make it five right there. So that shot going wide and missing the target, so that's an over and back violation. And Cornwall, Jeff Cornwall that is, takes over, giving it to Dilks. Now here's Matthews in a shot that Jamison calmly steps over and makes the save. He looks cool as a cucumber in that Black Wolves yeah, goal tonight. He's looking like he knows where the shot's going before the shooter does. That's when you know a goaltender's in the zone. Crawford working on Dilks. Pardon me, that's Hossick down there. Good job that time by Matt Hossick. Andrew Q with Thompson and McLean forcing him into the corner. Shot clock winding down, but for the Black Wolves, that's a big 30 seconds taken right off the clock. And I think Miss Dan Daniela Ponticelli has some news between the benches. Let's go down to the turf. Ryan, it's just the energy is up here in terms of the rush bench. Evan Kirk, of course, having been pulled in the first, has stayed, he's right beside me, actually, making sure that the guys are coming off. Big hits as well, floor level. So big, in fact, a shoe flew off earlier in the third. So we're going to see how they do in the last five minutes of the game. I had to look, I had to look down flats, make sure I still had mine on. <laughs> yeah, well, the uh, New England Black Wolves are knocking the socks off the rush right ah. now. I don't know about the shoes, but... Either way, it's hard for a sock to come off without the shoe that, off. That is, that, is, that is very logical. It's, that's, glad you're up here, Jake. <laughs> That'd be quite the trick. <laughs> We're under five to go here, Flats. It's stretch time from Sastel. Corbiel to Keenan as the rush running out of time rapidly here. They need a goal quickly, and they need a few more after that. Rush looking for one now. Matthews to Shatler. Solid box by the Black Wolves, and the shot from Keenan is an easy stop for Doug Jamison. I know they're down four here, four minutes to go. I would almost expect Adam Shoot to start coming to the bench next possession. Yeah, I would not be surprised in the least. Riley O'Connor takes that pass. As you're right, Jake, we're now under four minutes to go in this fourth quarter. As the Black Wolves look to make a statement here and announce to the rest of the league that they belong in the championship conversation this season. This win is going to open up a lot of eyes if they can hang on here for the next three and a half. Uh, really well. It's going to put the rest of the league on notice that New England is for real here this year. There's been a lot of talk about the division alignment and the schedule and the fact that the Black Wolves have some opponents they think they can beat. So we'll see how that plays out. It's still early in the season and we still have 328 to go, but we will send it to our final break here. You're watching the National Lacrosse League Game of the Week. Back inside Sastel Center as we take a look at the Geico play of the game. Yeah, it came on the setup from Riley O'Connor to Davey Emila, who was parked in behind the goal and comes around on Evan Kirk and sticks that one home. And Emila, that was the very first goal of the game, and it kind of set a tone for New England here as they've never looked back. They haven't trailed in this game at all. They've been out front the entire time after that Dave Emila goal. It's now 10 to 6, and there's 3.31 left on the clock for the rush to change the narrative here tonight. Well, somebody's going home with $30,000 here. The winner of the fifth. It wasn't me, Ryan Flaherty. Somebody's going home and doing some Christmas shopping tomorrow, I'm sure. And someone down below our broadcast location is enjoying a little confetti rain right now. Make some noise for your team. 
Rush with possession out of the restart. Ryan Keenan behind the net. Six attackers on the floor for Saskatchewan. Matthew scores right away. That's what the Rush needed to start this uphill climb. It's 10-7, still 324 to go. Yeah, they're gonna go to this look the rest of the way here if they can get back to level terms. But Matthew's showing up again here. He's been the leader offensively for Saskatchewan. Dinsdale, the setup behind the goal gets the defense turned around. That allows Matthews to step down Main Street here as he goes low glove on the bounce and pops it home, rush back within three here with 324 to go. Dinsdale and Keenan with the assists on that goal for Mark Matthews who gives him a hat trick on the evening. But he probably doesn't care much at all about that. He just wants the win here tonight. Thompson getting the face off win. So that's a start for Saskatchewan and he'll sprint to the bench and Adam Shute will head to the bench as well. And that sixth attacker right back out on the floor. Matthews waits for his teammates to get set up now. Dishes to Keenan and right back behind the net for Dinsdale. Has trouble with that pass though. Malcolm over there giving him a hard time. But finally Dinsdale able to come up with it back for Keenan. But shot clock almost down and that's a wasted possession now. Shoot has to hustle back into his crease. Big check off the benches. Messenger doing a good job there defensively. But now behind the goal and Shoot caught out of position. And there's a goal for Nick Tchaikovsky. That's and that's going to put this one to bed. It's 11 to seven with 240 remaining. Yeah, I thought Tchaikovsky was a little ambitious getting up the floor there and forcing things with a three goal lead and under three to go. But Adam Shute with a bit of a mistake here as Messenger bumps him out of the way. There was no opportunity coming, but Adam Shute thought he was going to come around the goal, went the wrong direction. Tchaikovsky turns the other way and dunks that one into the empty net to restore the four-goal lead, and that's a dagger there from the Black Wolves. Second goal of the season for Nick Tchaikovsky. It's 11-7, and the uh, seats here at Sastel Center are starting to empty out as people start to file for the exits. This is not what the Rush faithful had in mind here for a pre-Christmas celebration at the home opener. The Black Wolves are coming in and spoiling the party here tonight. Yeah, they'll have to wait another week before they get back on the horse here, Ryan. Uh, they'll, they'll have Christmas off and then they'll head for the Big Apple to take on the Riptide just before New Year's back in New York. Rush, though, aren't going to give up just yet. McIntosh stopped by Jamison. Keenan with the Rebound, two minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Shatler for Matthews, takes the shot and scores. Mark Matthews carrying the team on his back tonight. That's his fourth of the game, and still just a glimmer of hope for the rush with 2.01 remaining, down three. Yeah, it's, I mean, Matthews is trying, but it's just, I don't know if it's gonna be enough here, Flats, and you look, and it's almost like the perfect storm here in a, in a bad way for Saskatchewan. Zero from Keenan, zero from Dinsdale, zero from McIntosh, zero from Robert Church. And you're not going to win many games if you're in the rush when you have that kind of stat line from your offense. And Jeff Shatler with just a single goal to speak of tonight as well. It's been a quiet night all around for every offensive player not named Mark Matthews. And it just it doesn't happen to this team very often, if at all. This might be the first time I've ever seen that. I've been uh, covering this team since the first day they arrived in Saskatoon, and I don't think I've seen this, at least from a home field, for a home turf, rather, performance by the Rush. 145 remaining in the fourth quarter. The Black Wolves with a valuable face-off win. Time is on their side now. Crawford going for a run. They'll happily let this possession just wind its way down as he covers some ground in the rush end of the floor no no shot now now it's under five left as Jeff Cornwall falls right on top of him Dilks with some help as well shot clock violation on the black wolves and that is exactly what Callum Crawford was looking for he would have wouldn't have minded getting a goal but the 30 seconds he'll take Absolutely. Quick look at the out-of-town scoreboard here, Flats, before we get to break. Vancouver up 4-3 on the riptide. Toronto 5-0 over the San Diego Seals right now on the road as they look to bounce back after a bit of a shaky home performance to kick off their season. As we will stay with you through this final time out here with a minute and 18 seconds remaining. That'll give us a chance to take a look at some of the physical play here so far tonight. It has been a pretty physical game, Jake Elliott. Yeah, there's one that I thought could have been called across the back there, but Hasek 
who's definitely become stronger this season as well, gets into the back of Crawford. And we've seen some pretty violent collisions here, but nothing egregious. I think everything's been pretty inside the boards here, if you know what I'm saying, Flats. There's been some physical contact, but nobody's really crossed the line. Oh, and talk about physicality. How about Callum Crawford and the way he's managed to just fend off some of those checks and maintain possession tonight. He's just been a beast for the Black Wolves. And speaking of a beast, Mark Matthews got the rush scoring going on a penalty shot. Gets a fortunate bounce there as he beats Jameson in the slot. And then a couple of late ones here in the fourth quarter as well. This one coming on a six on five play as he lets one go on the step down there past Jameson. And then the overhand flipper from Shatler in. Matthews finds the five hole. Rush down three, buck 18 to go. Rush ball here. I've seen stranger things happen, Ryan Flaherty, but it's a tough task. Well, the Black Wolves were here a couple years ago and they scored three goals in the final 124 to force overtime in the game. They eventually won on a goal by Sean Evans. 118 on the clock, so as you said, right. it has happened, but boy, oh boy, the odds are not in the rush favor right now. Got to capitalize right the here. still behind the goal. Shatler scores just like that. Two-goal game, and that took just 50 or nine seconds, nine. excuse me. Nine. Jeff Shatler gets his second of the night. Yeah, great set play there. Just a sprint up the floor. Shatler is on the move, and that's what makes this play successful right here. Church to Dinsdale, but when the pass reaches Shatler, he's already got his momentum going around the goal as Jameson looks to his left. Shatler's going right, and that's why that goal happened, because he was already in motion when he accepted that pass. So the Black Wolves still with some work to do here, as now that it's just a two-goal game with 109 remaining, it changes the complexion. Under two minutes here, Platt, so they're going to review this one from Shatler, who is very close to the back of the crease as Williams steps into the booth. So as they review this, of course, they're looking to see if Jeff Shatler was in the crease. Yeah, uh, I want to see an overhead look here and just watch the white shoes on the back of the white line. Mate. I don't think there's any question the ball was in the goal. I don't think there's any question that the ball went in the goal before Shatler lays down in the crease. It's just a matter of where those feet take off from. If he's outside the crease when he leaves the turf, then this is going to count. And if he steps on the back of that white line, this one's going to come back. So we'll, I think the overhead shot will tell the tale. Not sure we're going to quite get the tippy toes in there. But let's see from that also, look. yeah, let's also remember here, Flats, that the call on the floor is a goal. So they need conclusive evidence to overturn this thing. And so far, I haven't seen it. Chris Williams taking a closer look. And as you mentioned, this is an automatic uh, review under two minutes, but still a close play here. And definitely one that could prove to be a really, really massive goal when all is said and done. So they need to get this one right. If the rush can win this face-off, well, uh, provided about this goal say. stands, yeah. then that's we'll be in I was for a exactly finish. Exactly about to say is that if it stands, and I think it will, because I just haven't seen anything that's going to bring this goal. Then we might get a good look here if we can wind that one back, fellas. But Jeremy Thompson's got to win the face-off here, and look out! I think this one might be coming back. Yeah, flex. I just it looks saw like it. that right big toe might just be touching the back of that crease line. So we go frame by frame, and ah, oh boy, I think that. Now again, it has to be conclusive. Yeah, it's white on white, and that's why guys wear the white sneakers, is because it blurs in with that white crease around that line. But I think that might be the look that Chris Williams was yeah. looking for right there. You can and, see it on the look there, his I toe is on the this, line. Unfortunately for the rush, this one's gonna come back here on Jeff Shatler. And that's gonna probably, once that is an announcement's made, that could well drain the rest of the energy out of this building. As uh, the remaining fans are on their feet in anticipation of this ruling as Chris Williams taking his time to make sure he sees every angle that he needs to see. Looks like he's seen enough though. The headset is off and we are going to get the official announcement here momentarily. As Williams with the helmet back on. Here we go. Toe is in the crease. We got no goal. As we expected there, Jake, as the crowd expresses their disapproval of that ruling, but that was what we saw as well on the replay, and 
it remains 11 to 8 and that yeah, that's a nice job. The that's, here. that's a nice job of the officiating and the camera crew to get the right looks that they're looking for and that's why you have the automatic make sure you get the right calls and there is an empty net goal from the black wolves which will put this one on ice with exactly one minute left on the clock make it 12 8 in favor of new england well uh, listen this isn't a very impressive win here for new england they can feel good about themselves. I know this is going to be a disappointing loss here for Saskatchewan. It comes early in the year. They head to New York in a couple of weeks and we'll try and rectify things. But I don't think it's the worst thing in the world here for Saskatchewan as well. They're still learning a little bit about each other as well on the offensive end, switching from a dominant right side to a dominant left side here as well. A few new pieces on the back end. They didn't get a great performance out of Evan Kirk here tonight as well. And it's so tough to come back in this league when you bury yourself in a hole like they did here tonight. Barring something crazy happening, this is going to be back-to-back single-goal, single-digit goal outputs for the rush to open the season as well. That's not something that happens to them very often. They're not held under 10. And to have it happen in both of their first two games. No, and I, and I go back to that, right? They've always played righty strong. McIntosh, Dinsdale, Church, Curtis Knight have all been the staples on that rush offense where it gave Keenan, Matthews, and Shatler a chance to play the two-man game a lot. Now with Connor Robinson in the lineup, it's a different look. And those guys have to learn how to play the three-man game. And Benny and Church have to learn how to play that two-man game a little bit better. And they'll figure things out here. Jeff McComb is way too smart of a coach not to let them figure it out. They'll get it. But you're right. Two performances here to start the year, both under 10. That's got to be a little concerning for Derek Keenan. And on the other side, a very impressive start to the season for the New England Black Wolves, perhaps underestimated by a lot of folks coming into this year, but they have made a statement here tonight. If you didn't believe them last week when they beat the Toronto Rock in Toronto, well, they just did the same to the three-time NLL champs here in Saskatoon by the exact same score, make the final 12-8 New England. Yeah, ultra impressed with the New England Black Wolves, and it all started with number 30, in between the pipes who got off to a great start let his team build a lead for him and then he really settled into the game and the rush were just never able to find their groove offensively and you got to give Jamison a lot of credit that defense a lot of credit and this coaching staff here of New England as well who obviously came into this game with a great game plan to defend against the rush they hold them to eight goals and they get 12 against this vaunted rush defense a very impressive performance here by the Black Wolves tonight as we take a look at some of the highlights here, the New England Black Wolves jumping out to a big lead in that first half. It was nine to five at halftime and they just never let the rush get back in the game. The closest Saskatchewan was able to cut the lead was three and it just felt like they were just playing in a slower gear all night long. The Black Wolves just had a little bit more as we send it down to floor level and Daniela Ponticelli who's standing by with Doug Jameson. Thanks guys. Jameson, what a game. You kept the rush on their toes in the sense that you kept them under double digit points but also forcing all these different things to happen. Goaltenders being pulled and all of that. What can you say about your performance and your team's performance? Um, I just tried to go steady, you know, make the saves I should and my D played awesome tonight so they got to get a lot of credit too. Now, when you came over here, you had a big smile on your face. Let's show that for the camera because people at home never really get to see the yeah, goalie yeah. smiling. So are you, like, what's next for you in terms of just get taking ready. the... Yeah. Just get ready for the next game. You know, we're excited. A lot of people didn't think we'd win these first two games, so it's exciting. we got to keep the chip on our shoulder. I was going to say your next contests are all at home. So what does that do uh, for you guys, knowing you have multiple home games in a row? It's awesome, mate. We love being at home, and it's a, it's an advantage. So uh, we just got to keep rolling here. We're off to a good start. Well, way to go. Thank you so much for your time and a great game. Congratulations. No Back to you guys. Thanks so much, Daniela. As we take a look at the save of the game presented by Alterna Bank, it, it was Adam Shute coming up with the highlight reel stop, but Doug Jameson made more of the saves here tonight, gets the win, but still an incredible effort on that play by Adam Shute. Yeah, I'm surprised the police aren't in the building after that larceny right there, Ryan Flair. That was spectacular from Adam Shute. But yes, Douglas Jameson, definitely the best goaltender here tonight.
We'll take one final br break before coming back to wrap this one from Sastel Center. Coming up on NLL Post Game Live, hi highlights and analysis of tonight's game and look at scores around the league. You're watching the National... Back inside Sastel Center as the fans make their way towards the exits. A disappointed crowd here inside the building as Rush Nation showed up ready for a party and that official feels like there was a few plays that were a little offside here tonight. Yeah, uh, that, 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 that's, that penalty signal was a little offside right there as well, Ryan Flaherty. <laughs> Absolutely, but still getting back to the proceedings on the floor, it was uh, not what the Rush fans came here expecting to see tonight. They were looking to party after a season opening win on the road, but it just never really materialized for the Rush. The Black Wolves taking it to them early and often in that first half. Yeah, uh, just a slow start out of the gates. You heard Coach Keenan say it early in the third quarter that he didn't think his team's compete level was where he needed to be to start this game. And in the National Lacrosse League, you can come back from three, four goals. You get yourself down five or six, it's really tough to dig yourself out of that hole. As we take a look at some of the uh, primary stat guys here tonight, Callum Crawford, three goals, three assists. That was all in the first half for New England as they built a 9-5 lead. Doug Jamison, first star of the game, 45 saves after a 46 save performance last week. And he's allowed just eight goals against in each of the first two games for New England. Meanwhile, Cal Rubish, he was strong on the back end for the rush. Mark Matthews, really the only offensive player who really made an impact. In fact, missing a goal on that there, he actually had four here tonight, including one on a penalty shot. Yeah, and I think that's probably a little bit concerning for Jeff McComb and Derek Keenan that they produced under 10 goals in their first two games. But again, I go back to it. It's going to take a little time for these guys to figure each other out. But I'm also a little surprised because I was here for practice on Friday night. I was here for morning shoot around this morning, and I thought the boys looked pretty sharp. They were whipping the ball around. Everybody was hot, keeping it touching. And that didn't translate into the game here tonight, and I'm not sure why. There was a lot. Fly, you know, they're catching them down low and, and into their body a little bit. So that's got to get cleaned up here for Saskatchewan, and, and that's partly the reason that they only produced eight goals here tonight. On the other side, the New England Black Wolves, we talked about Doug Jamison's performance, but really from him right on out, it was man for man, a really strong effort here. Another good road effort, and we talked about it off the open. The Black Wolves have now matched their road win total from last season. That's going to go a long way because they've got a whole slew of home games coming up. You could see them jumping out to a decent lead in their division if they can take advantage of all those home games coming up. Yeah, they're in tough in their division with Georgia, of course, but to get two road wins to start your year when you only got two road wins all season, that's impressive for New England, and, and, I, and it starts with Dougie Jamison and the way he's played in those opening two games. But you're right, now they go back to the Mohegan Sun where they were very good last year, and they have the next six all at home. It's a bit of a quirky schedule, so that can work for you, it can work against you. You need to make your hay at home, because if you don't, then you know you're going back on the road for a bunch. So it's very important for New England to make good on that big stretch of home games that they got coming out. And the Black Wolves, I think it's fair to say, feel like maybe they haven't been taken seriously enough coming yeah. into this season. It's your Doug Jamison post game mentioned that he didn't think a lot of people expected them to go 2-0. I don't think a lot of us expected them to win this game here tonight. Anytime you play the rush on the road, you have to favor the rush. But the Black Wolves, they proved something here tonight. Absolutely, and, and I think Andrew Q drafting him was, was a great thing for them to get another left-handed scorer on their roster, which they really needed. They go out and they acquire Jordan Durston, who's almost the perfect guy for Andrew Q to open him up for those outside shots. Steph LeBlanc still getting it done, producing at a pretty high level. And then Callum Crawford and Joey Rez on the other side have really found a nice chemistry together and have been super effective in the opening two games, both producing at a high clip. The rush went just two and four against teams from outside their own division last season, and their first game of that nature here this season ends in a loss as well. Spoke, speaking with Derek Keenan this week, said it's important. They need to win those games. This isn't the greatest way to start, but it is early. It's just two games into an 18 game season, and uh, we'll see what the rush and Black Wolves have in store in their next game. Thanks for watching the National Lacrosse League Game of the Week. You have been watching a special presentation of the National Lacrosse League.